check one two ladies and gentlemen tonight you know what it is it's sunday sunday service episode 23 i am your host e tough on the mic you are on hot topic celeb tv tonight joining us in the building all you power fans out there ghost book power fans that is joining us tonight in the building special guest we're taking you guys on a journey on a ride with the man himself the one and the only infamous shane johnson don't forget you guys can check us out follow us on hot topic celeb tv on youtube also you can check us out each and every tuesday night hot topics radio tv after dark and don't forget each and every sunday night it's Sunday service, Hollywood actors, producers, directors in conversation. Joining us in the building tonight, ladies and gentlemen, he is the man you love to hate. Hold on, let me connect him in here. There he is. Hold on a second. Guys, if you're just hopping on tonight, welcome. Another edition of Hot Topic Celeb TV. I'm your host, D. Teflon on the MIC. Joining us tonight, ladies and gentlemen, for episode 23 of Sunday service. That's Hollywood actors, producers, directors in conversation. We will be talking with the most influential stars and faces of entertainment, film, and TV, taking you on a journey of their success stories all the way to the beginning to the end. Tonight, you guys may know him as the legendary, infamous, bad boy, the man you love to hate and you hate to love. He is sax daddy. He is sexual <laughs> vanilla. He is the guy that you know that when you're in a, in a, in a sticky, sticky jam, he ain't the Wu-Tang Clan, baby. He is the infamous, <laughs> the one, the only Shane Johnson, Cooper Sacks, Power Series fans. Welcome the man to the building, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor to be with you. It's a pleasure, my friend. So how are you been doing, brother? How have you been holding up throughout hey. this, uh, this time of... Uh, 2020 pandemic and ladies and gentlemen if you're just hopping on tonight first get a drink kick back enjoy yourself tonight is sunday service we be we be preaching to the lord we preaching to the lord oh oh, oh i testify that this drink is going to be good <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen tonight if you have your questions you can drop them in the comments below we will be answering towards the end of this podcast tonight but tonight, I want to welcome you guys for episode 23. If you missed this episode tonight and you want to watch it back on replay, don't forget you can watch the full story at HotTopicCelebTV.com. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. You can get the link in the bio. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, iHeartRadio. So tonight, Shane, welcome, my friend. So how have you been holding up, brother? You know what? It's been a... I'm not going to complain. It's been a while. It's been wild for for all of us. I'm sure it's a learning curve, like figuring out the new the new thing that we're doing in terms of how we travel, how we work. You know, everything's the the kids. I got a wife and kids in L.A. and mm -hmm. everything is affected by it. But I feel like I've done a pretty good job of pretty good job of rolling with the punches. To be honest, there were a few months there where I was kind of lost. I was like, what, what is happening? And, mm -hmm. You know, are we going to get back to, are we going to get back to it? Um, and, you know, back, back when we were doing things like spending 30 minutes sanitizing apples and things like that, I was like, <laughs> is, this, is this our new life? You know, mm -hmm. um, hands all dried out from sanitizing and washing and just just kind of like smell like that, smell that, like cheap tequila on your hands yeah it was awful <laughs> but but you know the uh but i will say the good thing is is that it was really awesome um in retrospect to have so much time that we were kind of like forced to to quiet mm -hmm. to quiet down and to look at what's important and to like really look at at my wife and really look at my kids and just and be present with them. It was, you know, quiet the noise. And, um, and so I think that was really special. I feel like, I feel like I will remember this time like an extended snow day. You know, remember when you were a kid, mm -hmm. you had a snow day and it was like so exciting. I feel like my kids just had a year long snow day and um, where we were in the house together and everything was kind of shut down and, and it was special. It was stressful, stressful, mm -hmm. but it was also really, really special. And 
and I'm so thankful, man. So thankful to be to be back to work. Well, I think I think I mean that's that's the beauty. I think I mean for the flip side of, you know, for for regular day parents that work the nine to five, they're like, fuck, <laughs> I can't yeah. deal with this shit. But for people like us who are a lot of times away from home, away from the family, away from that quality time that you have with your kids and and stuff that you know that and, and and it's 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 something that you know you understand pretty early when you get into the business the sacrifices the sacrifices that you know you're going to be giving up time on things that are important to follow your dream and you know and especially obviously when you're a father and and especially now in these times that we live in you know the presence of being yeah. a parent is so important yeah and you know the thing is too is it's um just the 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 how the business has shifted and altered over the last 10 15 years mm-hmm. has really has really you know like when i moved out to la it was like 1998 when i started okay. um and um and the, the concept was you move to Los Angeles to do TV and film and you work in Los Angeles, right? Mm-hmm. For the most part. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, I mean, 85, 90% of the work I've done has been outside of Los Angeles. <laughs> and, you know, that's in the last eight years I've been, you know, my wife and kids are in California and Los Angeles okay. and, and I'm working in Brooklyn, you know? Okay. So um, it's, I could have literally lived anywhere in the United States and it wouldn't have really changed uh, in my career that much over the last eight years. You know, mm-hmm. I could have, I could have been in Montana or, I mean, you can't, you can't commute much further than Los Angeles to Brooklyn. You mm-hmm. know? So, so for the people, for, for the people, for example, for the people who are just jumping on, maybe seeing this beautiful man's face for the first time, I want you to tell people from the beginning, of course, who you are and where you're from and originally and how you, you got started in this, this crazy game that we're in of the acting game. Yeah. Okay. Well, I started off a young lad born February 29th, which is leap day, 1976. Um, I'm actually from a little farm town up in Washington state. Um, That's where I grew up. That's where I, you know, learned how to basically do everything. That's where I started acting. I was like 13, 14. I started doing, um, the plays in high school and stuff like that and fell in love with it. It was baseball and acting were kind of my two passions. Same baseball here. Yeah. Oh yeah. I I played semi pro and then I I decided to be stupid. Yeah. I I literally, I mean, baseball was my, my, was my goal. Like I, like, I mean, I, I grew up idolizing, you know, the Alan Trammells, the Mark McGuire's, the Jose Canseco's. I mean, those are the guys that I was like, yo, King Griffey. Because yeah, you know, I was I was in Washington State, so it was like the Mariners all the way. Yeah, and, it and was, it's so cool to see that. Yeah, for me, baseball was was. I mean, I I was viewed. I, I ended up basically getting scouted out by Michigan State, but then I decided to be stupid one year, uh, and someone said, "Hey, you know what?" Because this was the the era of Bo Jackson, you know, where you could where or right. Deion Sanders was like football, baseball. So someone's like, "Yo, you know." Throughout school, throughout high school and stuff like that, you know, I, ha- I was a, an aggressive kid. We're going to leave it at that, you know, and someone said, hey, you know, maybe you should take out that aggression playing football. Worst mistake I ever made. Great at football, but ended up basically first year, broke my wrist in about a uh, billion places, and that pretty much ended yeah. the whole baseball dream there. But continue. Yeah, well, mine wasn't nearly as dramatic. Mine was just, and this is a ridiculous thing looking back at it, but at the time I was so frustrated with the politics that were in baseball. Okay. And, you know, just favoritism. Because, I, you know, I come from, I'm sure this is true in every school and every, you know, team, but I was like, you know, somebody's dad had had access or, you know, somebody, somebody could, could donate or whatever it was that, mm-hmm. that, that it was as much about that as it was talent. And that was so frustrating to me. And, and so in, so I put my mind, I was like, you know what, I'm going to do the acting thing. When I was like a junior senior, probably when I was a senior, I, I made the full on commitment to act anyway. So from there I got a scholarship. 
I was terrified because I, you know, nobody else from my town of like three stoplight town of 5,000 people, nobody else went on to be an actor or Mm -hmm. pursue much, you know, or even really pursue the arts very much. Okay. And so I went to, uh, I studied in Walla Walla, Washington at a a great little college called uh, Whitman College, which is actually where Leela, who played Angie, where she, she went as well. And, um, and then I studied in London at Lambda. Uh, and that's where I, I got my first gig, which was Saving Private Ryan. Private Ryan, yeah. And um, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but it was <laughs> so much. I mean, it was my first gig. And I was mm-hmm. right, out, right out the gate. I'm working with Spielberg and Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. You know, these guys. And, I, and it was such an awesome experience. We filmed that stuff in Ireland. And then, and then I went back and finished school because I, I was a junior in college at that point. I went back and finished school and, and then um, moved to Los Angeles. And, and, you know, for a long time, it was indie films, small parts in bigger movies, uh, guest stars. I was always like some pedophile or a murderer or, a, you know, it's always something creepy and twisted. Um, I don't know why. That's just how I read. I guess when I walk in the room, people are like, <laughs> I, I hate that guy. He's, he kills people. I don't know what it was, but I, I seem to get a lot of those kind of creepy roles. Well, then, I, I, um, I was speaking of your creepy role but before you continue. I, for the fans who are, you know, a lot of the fans, you guys may know him obviously from power. When I fell in love with this man's work, when I was like, yo, this dude is, he's on, I, I, and I, and I, I, the first day we connected, I was like, dude, you are the Christian Bale of prime time. Like the levels <laughs> that this guy can bring. And the reason why I say that, for those who haven't seen it, the possession of Michael King. Oh, thank you, man. This yeah, was film awesome. was so epic and so... It was like watching The Walking Dead mixed with Poltergeist, mixed with... Uh, Almost like a, what's the name of that film? Um, even like a psychotic sort of like uh, Blair Witch mix into the mix of it. Yeah, and yeah. to me, when I saw the levels of, of how you portrayed this character, I said, I don't know who this fucking guy is, but this guy is going to do some big damn things in the business. And to see you, you transpire... And, and be able to captivate an audience as you've done, obviously, with power. It's been beautiful to watch your career, man. It's really been beautiful to watch your Thank career you. blossom. And I, and, 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 I, and I still mean it. I, when, when that show wraps, you know, you'll probably get your own spinoff, so I'll have to wait a little bit longer. <laughs> but when, but when, it, when it does come to the time, me and you will do something together on a Amen. project. I, 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 I have... I have wanted to have this guy, ladies and gentlemen, you know, and if, and if you agree, if you guys have seen American Psycho, tell me that Shane Johnson would not play the best Patrick Bateman out there. I want to see your comments and let me know what you guys think. But continue, as you said, in, in the role well, that you were you getting. Know, it's funny that you say that because one of my favorite IMDb comments, which, by the way, reading reviews and, and looking at comments is – is tricky because a lot of times they're, you know, fans or people who are just going, Hey, I, I like what you did. But half the time it's people just wanting to, to, to hate and to tear mm-hmm. you down, you know? Um, and one of my favorite IMDB comments in one of the first, by the way, so this was like 10 years ago, I saw this and I was like, what the hell, what the fuck is this? And it was, he's like a chubby Christian Bale. And I was like, what the, what the hell? <laughs> We ain't chubby no more, bro. I seen the app. <laughs> oh man, chubby Christian Bale. Now, granted, they might have just seen the Machinist or something when Christian Bale was like 127 pounds or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. But, but anyway, so from there, I yeah, I moved to Los Angeles. I, you know, like a lot of people, I was slogging. I was waiting tables. I was trying to figure it out. I didn't have, you know, I don't come from money. I I was just, you know. Make it, I was swinging a hammer. I was doing construction work, plumbing, electrical work, um, driving around a shitty, shitty car, multiple shitty cars. <laughs> and, um, you know, and 
And then, you know, you have years that are awesome. And then you have years where you're like, oh my God, what's happening? And, um, and thankfully the last decade, you know, um, has been really remarkable, starting with the possession of Michael King, which was right before power really. And, um, and it's just been an incredible run now. And it's, it's been a, you know, it's funny cause it's been a long time in the making. And I think mm -hmm. what I, what I would say is that coupled with sticking to it, you know, just sticking to it. Oh, I love the cat. That's awesome. <laughs> Get out. Hold on. Hold on. Get out. Here we go. No, no, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think that the, the, this, it's interesting because I don't know if this is your experience, but um, you've been in the game a long time, right? 26 years, man. Yeah, same, so, exact same. 1996 was actually my start. Yeah, that was my first professional gig, but mm -hmm. I didn't really get to LA until 98. But that, but, that was um, like me. 90, 99 was when I made the jump to Los Angeles the first time. Oh, nice. Nice. From where? Originally from Bayshore, Long Island, New York. And oh, then I relocated, I relocated with my family um, to Toronto um, because my mom ended up getting a job out in Canada as a nurse. So we relocated the whole family. And wow. then basically, like, basically when I you know, became old enough to make my own decisions, I was like, I got to start this journey. But I didn't really know how, you know, because when you're young, you don't, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. You, know? <laughs> you don't know which, which way you want to go. And yeah. uh, for me, it was, it was basically, you know, 50 bucks. And uh, same thing, <laughs> didn't, have, didn't have money. And I ended up basically jumping on a bus with a bus ticket. And I ended up first in Daytona Beach, Florida. Had really no clue anybody out there. Uh, worked in the, the nightlife scene for a while. And then that led me to an opportunity uh, eventually working with BET mm. and then BET basically gave me my, my start to sort of learn the business. And then I said, okay, you know what? I'm ready. Went to LA and met a man by the name of Sidney Pollock, gave him my shot and the rest was history. And wow. from there it's been, you know, you know, the grind, man, you know, there's, there's ups yeah, and there's highs and, yeah. And the business is not for everybody, man, because it's like people, as I always say, you know, people see you now, for example, on power for the younger fans, the younger yeah. generation where they're like, you know, they're just getting the first introduction to you. Right. But people like me who study people's craft, because I, I always look at like where I can take things from certain people to perfect myself, because I always look at it. Knowledge is power. Like, the way you approach something, whether it's to a scene or a role, I'm like, fuck, okay, because were you, for example, like, you playing this role as a lawyer and a prosecutor, that was the stuff that I got earlier on. I was on a television show called Effects of Series with Carrie Ann Moss, who is now Trinity in The Matrix. Yeah. And, you know, I played a lawyer on that, and obviously, like, over the years, I've gotten casted for either the lawyer or the cop or whatever, but I like to just see actors that, and, 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 I, and maybe I'm wrong because I want you to tell your story, is that like you seem just watching your performances in the earlier starts, things that I've seen you in, very theater. Because when you come into a, a character, you become that character. Like there's other actors, as you know, they read a script and they just read it and they just do their thing. But there's other actors that embody the character to the plane. They really listen to the dialogue. They really listen to the other actors so that it comes off authentic. And that's right. what I loved about your work was like, okay, you know what? This was, this was a guy that I, I got to keep, I got to keep hey, track on. You know what, man? I really appreciate you saying that. Cause that's kind of like, that's the goal, right? I mean, the goal is to be a person in a place having an experience and I think sometimes the the trick is, is like a lot of actors, now you'll see this a lot. Like a lot of actors think just, oh, a person in a place and they think, oh, just be chill, be boring. Be uh, just kind of just say the line. Comfortable. You know, yeah, just be really comfortable. And it's like, yeah, but the thing is, is we're, we're, we're getting a window as, as an audience. 
like not that I think as an actor from an audience's perspective, mm -hmm. but but jumping into the audience's perspective for a minute kind of gives me a unique perspective as an actor of like. And it's in the, and then you have to sever that tie because I don't want to be watching myself like a like an audience member. But <laughs> yeah. but what I do want to do, but what I want to do want to do is go. How is this day? How is this situation unique? Mm -hmm. You know, like why are we? Why do why do we care? Mm -hmm. What 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 piece of information is? How are we furthering the story along? What what is being handed to the audience here that they need to take with them? Mm -hmm. And how do I service this story? And what is my note as an artist? Like, what is my, like, I look at it like a symphony, right? So when I go in and I have, you've got Ghost and you've got Tommy and you've got Tasha and you've got Kanan and you've got, you know, Leela, um, Angie and, and all these other cats around us. I go, okay, so what's my note? Mm -hmm. like, what's, my, what's my instrument? Am I, are we just going to all be the same kind of like instrument? Or mm -hmm. how, how do we turn this into something that's, it's got some some dynamic and some life to it and some like wait what, where's that guy what, what's cool what's going on with this person and and that's when you kind of like lean forward in your seat and you're interested and that's when you really get information you know when somebody like you know sometimes when when somebody tells you something when somebody gives you something and it just goes right out the other ear mm -hmm. Like, but you're nodding and you're going like, yeah, but, you, but, you, but <laughs> you're not but hearing. You have no fucking clue what they just mm -hmm. said. Sometimes, and this happens to me a lot, and I, it's embarrassing, but I do that with names a lot because I'm. But that's I'm the business, of, bro. We, we yeah. all do that shit because we we see each other. Like, how many times you've been on a red carpet and you like oh. you walk by somebody and you're like, you know them, but you can't figure it out. But you walk by them so many times, you've seen them at events, and it's almost embarrassing for you to come up after like three years later and be like, hey, what's your name? Like, the fuck what the or the, the worst is when they come up to you and they're like hey shane so good to see you again and you're like oh my god so good to see yeah. you too. And then you're like, oh. <laughs> but 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 it's but i think the reason is is because I, I almost immediately go in go into really reading somebody mm -hmm. rather than so the because you know um acting and life and this is one of the things that's been interesting to me as an actor about covid is that we get, we get so many, our communication is so multifaceted. Like we have our voice, but the, but the expression on your face, the look in your eyes, mm -hmm. the way you hold your body, the way you tilt your chin, like all of it is, is feedback that we don't even understand, but in, mm -hmm. internally it means something to us, right? And so when, you, when you're on set and you have, and everybody has masks on like this, and, and then every, and the director has a shield and a mask on, and you're rehearsing, and then they say, okay, roll camera, take your mask off and go, right? And you felt like zero connection with anybody else other than just hearing them. And it's mm -hmm. muffled because it's like this, you know? Yeah. And it's, and so it's like really assuming the position now, um, which I actually think just takes a little bit more of a kind of superhuman effort to just be present and not get rattled by the fact that it's almost like it's almost like if we if we were doing a scene and we we had to go away and learn our lines separately and figure out the, the what the scene was about separately and then they say okay the cameras are rolling go in and do it you got one take and you're like well c can we talk about it can we work this out can we but that's like vibe? daytime can that's like daytime it's like daytime yeah. tv one take Right, right. And you know what? And maybe if I had had more of an experience with daytime, like I know you have, but, um, but I've never really done daytime. So that kind of um, just, just like I said, assuming the position is a skill that mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still learning that skill because like you said, I'm a little bit more theater based where I like to drill something to the point where I, I've, I've done it enough. I've vibed with it enough. I've considered, I've considered what, what instrument I am, why I'm there, what the story is, all those things enough that I can like kind of let it all go. Mm -hmm. and, and be well, present. that's the thing. Like, as theater, you, I mean, you're giving, you're, you're literally giving yourself and it's pretty much the same as daytime except live, you know, and, you, right. and you're, you, you have the ability, I think now, like with your training and your experience and exactly what you said, like with the mask, it's very hard to read people. 
read people's mm-hmm. con- I mean I like I like I've been asking like cuz again like we've been sitting here waiting in the you know like like a like a like a like on a chicken nest waiting for us to get back in the production so I've been asking all my friends who have been like who've gone back early like what is it like like how are you how is the preparation and and everyone's got their own different thing and I think you know as as you said about covid you know we were, we were in this world before this where everything was fast paced even our phones you know you're filtering through your cell phone feeds daily trying yeah. to process all of this information that it's impossible because there's so much going on at once and then it covid forced everybody to stop and i always say like it it was a it was a stoppage that needed to happen because all of these things we have these gadgets and technology that supposedly as they say are supposed to bring us together it's truly actually brought us apart like if you really look at it like the the the, the amount of people that i know and i'm i'm old school like you i think is that i believe in communication like real communication of getting to know somebody getting to know you know their story their their knowledge right. their, because i look at you know what knowledge is power you can never have enough you can never be not learning there's so many people you said like they get comfortable and they're like okay i got this job and i think where you were sort of trying to say like, and i could be wrong but i think we're on the same wavelength is that when you're in a scene and you're doing a scene and and yes i know your journey i know the struggle i know the grind and then when you land on power you're like okay this is great say season one you're like fuck this is finally what i've been working for to get a part of something great like this right and then obviously the way power is written you it's like being on the fucking sopranos you never know when you're gonna get whacked every five minutes so yeah. you have a pressure in the sense that i could get comfortable and have the audience see me as you said like either bland or one way but then for the potential audience, and again, the audience is the audience. Yes, there's the fan base audience. But you're, the way I look at it, every scene is technically an addition for another potential job. Because like, when someone's yeah, seeing man. you, when someone's seeing you and they're like, okay, like for me, like when I first saw that film, I was like, yo, I'm going to start following this guy's career. Because I was like, I mean, I remember you from Saving Pride Warren, but to really see your work in that film, I'm like, this guy is like, on a whole other level of crazy. Like he can, he can play it in, in a methodic way that it makes it more believable. Like I, like I see, for example, like if they, I see you on a Dexter, like that's who I thought of. Like when I first that saw that, I was like, this is a Dexter type of character mindset because to play a role like that, you would think someone else's face would be on that role. And it wasn't, it was a guy that was like, Seem like a normal looking guy, you know, but then yeah. shit happens. And, and, and I think that's when you go, when, for you, the scenes that you have pulled off in power, because even I think the fans can attest to this. If you guys are the fans watching this, you have a way of, even if it's the smallest amount of dialogue, to be able to just steal a fucking scene, steal the room, and, and, and absolutely capture <laughs> your attention where you're like, this fucker just say that shit? Like, did he just say this? But 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 it's like it's beautiful because, as I said, you you put yourself in a position now, being on a show that's seen by millions, a huge fan base all around the world. Yeah. As I said, it's a potential addition for someone to say, because as you know, like th- there's so many. It's to me the thing I love about power is that there's so many people that are in our business that are fans of the show. Like, you don't really get that very often on shows where you have other actors and producers and directors going, I know this character, I know that. And Power's done that. And and, 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 and to me, what's... It's become part of the culture. I mean, I like, it was... uh, To me, when I was was driving out to the desert out in L.A., Mm -hmm. and and that car... There's a Cardi B song where she's... She mentions Tommy and Keisha. And I was like... Oh man, we're part of the culture. I mean, if you can, with, if, without talking about power, if you can just mention Tommy and Keisha and people know what you're talking about, mm-hmm. then, then we, you know what I mean? Um, and 
And it's been like, man, I'll tell you, it's been the, the fans and the audience have been so incredible for this entire ride. I mean, obviously for me, it's mostly like hate and, and, all, and, and all that. But, and it's funny because the first couple seasons, it really kind of bothered me, you know, the, the, the hate. And then, I, and then once I re- actually realized what it was, it's become, for me, it's become, um, I love it. Like I, but I, I don't, I don't, I I don't even, but, of it. but they mean, I, I don't even really understand in season one the hate. Because to me, like, the guy that I, like, hated, like, I hated with the passion was Greg Knox. Like, I, I want that guy dead from day one. Like, he just, to me, was an irritating, not the, the, the actor himself, but just the way that, to me, Sax didn't seem like a guy that was hateable. He was just doing his job. Like, he was yeah, literally just yeah. doing his job. So and he was just what, frustrated. He was, he, was like, he was like a disgruntled employee, right? He was... He he was like, why is this girl getting uh getting promoted when I should get promoted? Okay. And I I thought that I was more, and I also thought she was shady. And um, it's funny because I actually was auditioned for Greg Knox. I auditioned for that role, um, first before I auditioned for Sax. And before that, I auditioned for Tommy. That was my first audition for Power, actually, which um I knew I was wrong for, but you know, that's part of the history of it is just to kind of like put yourself out there and roll with it. And, so um, before, I want to, I want to roll that back before I want you to, I, I want to talk about that actually, like your, your audition process for that. But conti- I want you to continue from where, you know, when you, when you first came to LA, as you said, you know, okay. 1998 and that journey from there. Yeah. Well, you know, it was, uh, it was a lot of, a lot of struggling and I mean, I, I hate the word struggle when they say like a struggling artist. I don't really think it was that it was just, you know, I landed in LA thinking if I'm being quite honest, I thought that I was going to be huge. I thought that I was going to blow up immediately. Right. And, and that didn't fucking happen. And um, I had some cool opportunities and stuff like that, but the competition is real, man. There's, you know, and it's all, it's about having the right team and getting the right opportunities and getting it, you know, getting the right job because sometimes you can get an incredible gig and it, and it ends up on a shelf. Mm -hmm. And it could have been the thing. If people saw it, they'd go like, who the fuck is this guy? But it's sitting on a shelf somewhere, you know? And so for me, um, it was just a lot of, you know, through my twenties and into my mid thirties, honestly, my casting i had to catch up to my casting because i have a certain kind of voice i have a certain kind of manner and i never i never really came across like a like a college kid and when you when you first hit la and you're 22 like i was that's what you're doing you're doing all these like cw shows and Mm wb stuff and and you know princess diary type stuff and and college roles and things like that and i i never came across like a college kid even when I was in college so I I remember having my agent at Paradigm tell me he's like hey you're gonna have to wait you know be patient and your career is really gonna start taking off when you're in your mid-30s and I was like dude fuck you man because I was like 25 at the time Mm -hmm. I was like man what are you talking about like 10 years from now (laughs) I I need I need something now and so it was uh but he was right at the end of the day he was right and it was um you know, it was kind of growing into my casting and I'm thankful for it because it also, man, talk about humbling, a humbling experience, you know, to, um, I know this for a fact, if I had, if I had blown up at 22 in mm-hmm. the money and the attention and all that stuff showed up when I was 22 or so, I don't think it would have been good for my soul, man. You know, I just, mm-hmm. I think I had to grow up. I think I had to have some experience. I think I had to take some L's, you know, and, and, and face a few, a few demons. And then, and then I was ready because now the, the success or whatever fame I have, and like all, all that really doesn't mean anything to me other than it can allow me to continue to work. Right. And so like, for, like, for, for you, like, obviously, as you said, going through that, that struggle and, or, or, you know, process, we would say, because I, exactly what you said, like, I don't, 
I don't I don't even like even when people use the word successful. I'm like I'm hot. No. I'm hot. Sorry, I'm taking this this hoodie yeah, off. Yeah. I'm sweating over here. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> Um, they 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 use the word successful, and I always tell people, no, I'm progressful, because I think success is something that you have when you're done. Like when you've accomplished everything that you've actually wanted to do in your career, that's success. But the journey, in a sense, is part of the process, you know, of having to go. So for you. Going from, as I said, you know, the, the wait period to then now yeah. reaching success. How do you handle that? Like, how do you, like, how do you handle now, you know, one minute, like, you're walking on the street and nobody knows you. And then all of a sudden, the next day, everybody fucking knows you. How do you handle that? I'm, I'm honestly, I just, re I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful. I really... I try to engage pretty much anybody that reaches out to me or anybody I see, I try to like flow them love because, you know, I've seen some, I've seen some big celebs kind of like treat people, fans. Like shit. Uh, yeah. And kind of like, <laughs> I don't have time for you or like, how dare you talk to me sort of energy. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck you, man. Mm -hmm. Or, or woman in some cases. Mm -hmm. It's like, they're the reason that you're who you are. Without them, you ain't shit. Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're, you're, not, you're not better than them. You're not more important than they are. You just have a different job than they do. And, and I think it's really important for us to, no matter how much money you make, no matter how much success you may have, you know, we're, we're all in this damn thing together. We're all on this planet together. And I feel like the one thing that I do like about social media, there's some things I totally <laughs> fucking hate about it. But the thing, the thing I really like about it is that it, it really allows um, people to connect with us and allows people to kind of be a part of the journey and, and, and be able to comment to an actual person. And sometimes, you know, it's not all the time, but sometimes people, you know, I'll respond or, or whoever will respond. And in that connection, it's like, it's like our art as opposed, you know, Hollywood used to be, it was, it was over there. Mm -hmm. and we would and we would you know when i was growing up like watching magnum pi it was like that was there was no way to like reach out to tom Selleck, mm -hmm. or tc or you know it was no way to do yeah. it just like or, you know it was just like some sort of and now it's like boom and they respond and you're like oh my god mr t just told me thanks <laughs> you know you know what i mean but do you feel I did, like I did it, you on the a team brother you know it's but like do, but, but do you feel that it's it's like hurt the business in a way because I, the think way I, I think it's really hurt the business. I think yeah, it's hurt because, the business because it's allowed, it's made, it's made agents and managers who you got, you, you know, they're kind of like the necessary evil in this business that, that they, um, you know, if you want to go, if you want to go sign with an agent, I, I bet you now today, the first fucking thing they do is instead of looking at your resume, they look, look at your, your social Instagram. media. Mm -hmm. And that's and to me, honestly, that's disgusting. It is. It's, it's disgusting. It's um, dis because because you know why it's disgusting is because, you know, people like us who, as I said, who have gone through that journey, that struggle, that grind, that busting your ass, that waiting for because you know because obviously, like I'm sure you've heard this when you got after you got power, Shane, you're so lucky. You're so lucky right. to be on it, and you're like, like it just happened overnight, right? And, and and my thing is like, there's no such luck. There's no such thing as luck in this business. Like, when you get an opportunity, you fucking earn that shit. Like, you earn you. It wasn't like they were looking for Shane Johnson before power. Like, no. you probably had to audition, as you said, for multi, and then you earn your opportunity onto that cast. And then your talent took you the rest of the way. And this is why I tell people, it's like, you have people that, who, you know, start off in the business. Like, when we started, as you said, you know, you couldn't access a Tom Selleck. The same way I couldn't access a Sidney Pollock. But I right. knew that I'm like, okay, knowledge is power. The only way, because again, you, you, you never know when you're going to walk into a room and meet your hero or meet a legend or meet anybody. And my story was, it was like, I don't want to be in a room and be like 
you see your, you know, a, a very important person, and you're, and and the only thing that comes out of your mouth is, oh hi, nice to meet you, like a fucking right. fan. So I was like, okay, I need to do the research. And back then there wasn't Google, there wasn't a fucking, <laughs> it was it was Atari with a little fucking stick man. Yeah, yeah. And if you want, we actually to get had we actually had encyclopedias. In exactly. And you <laughs> yeah. and, and 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 if you have to go to the library, you remember Cole's notes. Those little, it was a book where you, you couldn't take it out of the library, but you had to like write down information because it was like the most important book in the library that they would never allow no, you to rent. Oh my God. Cole's note was a, was the most annoying thing, but it was like the best thing throughout when I was growing up was that it was, it was, it was like, it was a book that had all the answers to everything. So if you had a test it had all the answers, but you had, you weren't allowed to take this book out of the library. So you had to basically put up like, I don't know if you remember those slide machines and you put the micro paper. Yeah. And we have to write down the information and take the notes. And I remember watching certain films and certain shows. And I was like, look, it's not the celebrities, the actors that are important to me. It's people who are making this shit because those are the ones that are making the decisions. The actors are just getting their job. Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, I'm going to watch the credits. And I said, I never know when I'm going to be in a room with a such and such. And I said, but if I am, I want to be able to continue that comp. Cause I would say everything in the business is about relationships. That's it. Yeah. It's, it's, relationships. Yeah, network, it's yeah. nothing. It's nothing else. It's the relationship that you build. And it's also the fact of your attitude, because as you say, you can give people information all day long, but then you say it goes through one ear and not the other, because they're not willing to actually fucking listen. My thing was like, I'm going to get the information, but in order for me to grow, not only as an artist, as a performer, or whatever my, my, my goal is, is to take that knowledge and apply it. Because I know if I do get into that opportunity to be in that room with that such and such Hollywood bigwig, I want the conversation to go longer than five minutes. I want to be able to continue this conversation. So instead of coming up like a obsessed fan, hi, and jumping, I I'd fuck with them. I'd be like, "So you grow? I heard you gross, you know, three point five million in your last film." And I was like, eighteen years old. You're like, the fuck is and and for me, even though I didn't know everything, the Coles notes allowed me to take the bulletin points about a certain producer, a certain director, uh, to get you, to yeah. know those certain things, so that they would be like, well, "How the fuck you know that?" And then it's like, okay, they, they look at you on a different aspect of, like, this guy pays attention. And I remember going to Sydney. Yeah. Sydney, I was like, look, you don't know me. You're 75 years old at the time. I was like, I don't want you to pay me. So my, it was my first year in L.A. I was like, I don't want you to pay me. I just want you to teach me your knowledge. I work for free. I don't care what it is, whatever job it is. I just want an opportunity. And he could have just... Shovered right. me off because, but he was like, he took my card and that was it. I didn't think I wasn't hearing anything from him. But a month later, I get a call. He's like, come to my office. Started off doing an internship. And I literally, for the first two years of the business, dude, I didn't make a penny. I was sleeping in the car, sleeping on the road. Like, because I was like, it's, it's the knowledge that I'm going to get from this man is not, you can't get in a book. And I think those are the right. things that when people, see your story and they see your journey when you finally get there. They don't get the fact that, you know, they see the glory, Cooper Sacks. Yeah. But they don't know the fucking story of Shane Johnson. Yeah, and, and listen, I, I, here's the other thing, man. There, there's, I, I believe that if you need it, like if you're an artist in, mm -hmm. your, in, your, in your soul and, and you need it, if, you, if you're coming out to L.A. To be, to be famous or to make money, without the without the um the soul of it in place um then i feel like they're the people that fall away unless they get unless they do get lucky and they and they hit right big right away the people that stick around like I, i'll say this and i'm sure this is true for you too mm -hmm. when back when i started auditioning like 25 years ago i would go into these rooms man there would be i swear to god there'd be like a, hundreds of guys that look just like me Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they could be family for, up for, for gigs. And then um, 
And then five years later, it was like half that many. Mm -hmm. 10 years later, it was half again. And to well now, I go into rooms, I see the same 10 guys all the time for things, you know? Now, granted, the last year, we haven't really been going in to audition much, but but that was my experience up until COVID is you would see the same guys and you, you become, you know, you're all, you're all family men. You all have, most of them have families. Most of them have been at it for 25, 30 years. And, um, and they're the ones that need it. They're the ones mm -hmm. that are like, this, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. And the people, the people that come out to just kind of be famous, they peel away. They last a couple of years. They go back home. And they and they go move on with their life, and it was an experiment for them, and that's cool. I'm not I'm not judging that. I'm just mm -hmm. saying that to me, if you if you have a dream and you persevere and you don't take no for an answer and you double down on yourself mm -hmm. and you keep you keep putting money into that investment. And by money, I don't mean money. I mean, like you just keep investing in yourself and investing in the mission and the dream. There's no way you can lose. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can lose. I've literally never heard the story of somebody who was like, yeah, man, I had this passion for acting and I went to Hollywood and I put in like 40 years and I just like auditioning and studying and like put my heart and soul into everything I did. And I just literally never worked. I never booked anything. It's like, it doesn't, it doesn't happen mm -hmm. because the people that are built that way, success comes to them because that's, that's who they are, you know? And, and there's enough. And by the way, now there's enough work for all of us, man. They're like, I don't know now with COVID and everything, but as of a year ago, there were 500 different productions and then some in mm -hmm. production, 500 mm -hmm. there, there's work, you know, there's work for for guys that look like you, for guys that look like me, for guys and girls that look like everybody. And thank God that that's breaking open and more and more people are getting opportunities, you know, but it's, I, I just feel like the one thing that I would like to, that I like to impart to people when I teach, when I mentor people is like, Double down on yourself, persevere, don't let L's or failures or like rejection. Cause you know, we, we're in a, we're in a business of rejection, right? You know, we hear no more than any other business, bro. We hear that word no more than any other industry. Yeah. I mean, we're basically professional, you know, um, interviewers or interviewees, I guess we, you know, most people get out of college with a degree and they go on whatever, 10, 15 interviews and they get a job and they, and they're in that job for 10, 15 years. Maybe some people have the same job for their whole life, right? Mm -hmm. We're in a business where we've auditioned probably, I mean, what, a thousand times? <laughs> a thousand? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe more. More. And, and, and if you're lucky, you get what, like 3% of those? Maybe, probably not even that. You know? How have you? How have you adjusted? Like obviously, from before doing the in-person editions to now, the self tape. That's like more in the Zoom auditions. Like, well, you know I, what I've done. What I have done is I've become more. I've taken certainly taken a lot more risks because the thing that I know is that if you give an actor the opportunity to film themselves and then edit it and then send it in, everybody's going to get the damn best damn take that they can, right? Mm -hmm. And so you got to really throw down in your self tapes and you have to go above and beyond and use everything you have. And, and I'm not talking about being unprofessional. I'm just talking about, you know, give them an experience and, you know, don't shy away from big, being bold and, and being, you know, interested in, in the material because, how the hell do you stand out when the decisions are all made via like somebody's on their phone or on, on a little laptop and going, nope, 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 nope. I mean, it's disheartening. Mm -hmm. It's disheartening a lot of times because sometimes you'll, you'll do like 10 self tapes and you won't hear anything. Not even from your agent or manager. You just don't hear anything. It's just so what, what keeps you going when you hear, when you don't hear that? So like when you get that silence, like what, 
because I know obviously, you know, certain people like, you know, as you said, like the business is not built for everybody and people, yeah. you know, they burn out. What has kept you going for this time? Man, I'm such a dreamer. I'm such a dreamer that every, every, it's like, um, I have a, it's not an addiction. That's because I don't have an addictive personality, but it's, um, it's, it's like every time there's an audition mm -hmm. in front of me, it's like a scratcher. It's like a, it's like a lottery ticket, right? Like you might win. Chances are you're not going to chances odds in terms of the odds, but in your mind, you're like, Hey man, I'm still going to, if I gave you a lottery ticket, are you not going to scratch it? I'm not talking about like the big Powerball. I'm talking about the ones that you scratch. Mm -hmm. Who the fuck is going to look at it and go like, eh. <laughs> True. I love the you scratchy I mean? ones better. Yeah. Yeah. Or scratch off or like a shitty audition would be, you just kind of scratch off half of it and you go like, eh. And you don't even like really, you don't really. And so for me, man, I'm going to take a quarter and I'm going to make sure everything is off of that card and go like, shit, I didn't get it. But, but I did everything I could, right? I'm just making up some weird analogy, but I think it's pretty accurate because every, every audition is a potential gig. And even if I have a hundred auditions and I, and it's radio silence, Man, it's frustrating as fuck, but you have to just go the next, the hundred and first comes out and you got to treat it the same way you treated the first one. Cause that might be the thing that's, you, that's your power. You know, that what, might be for thing. you, what, what attracts you to like, like, for example, either a certain skill, like what attracts you? Like, do you have certain scripts to, that you're attracted to? Well, at this point, or you stories. Know, I really, yeah, you know, at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in really, it's more about the work, the, the workflow and the work for me. I, I want to, my next thing is not so much about character, or like what kind of characters I want to play. It's more about, I really want to, I really want to produce and I really want to do material that, that I'm excited about, that I feel like is, is marketable, but that I'm also really excited about, passionate about. And I want to do it with people that I, that I love. Like, I feel like mm -hmm. I'm at that place in my career where I can, I can, I have enough of, like you were saying earlier, it's like, you got to have a network. Right. And I feel like I have enough of a network that I can, that I can put pe puzzle pieces together and raise funds and make some incredible work, you know, and well, as you know, that as you to said, it's exciting. As you said earlier, like, as you said, you know, in re like, like now when it comes to agents and they're looking, you know, at your Instagram. And this is why I always tell people like, in, in my classes where I'm like, I'll tell students, I'm like, look, the days of just being an actor are over. Like, you can be an actor, but if you want to have longevity, you better be damn good. Yeah. But if you want to have longevity where you can have real longevity, You've got to think outside the box. You've got to think of producing, directing, writing, and having your own platform per se to build your your network, as you as you were saying. And like to you, like, branding, right? It's branding. It, it's branding. So for you, like, what would you say the the differences, even before Cooper Sachs, even before you landed that that role, what would you say the differences for you as an actor in your story from when you started? to now and also as you worked in the film and you're now on prime time what did you find as the harder medium um to me uh tv is in a way is more difficult um although a lot of the films i've done have been extra difficult because it's like hey we've got 20 days to shoot you know, two hours of material. And, and so sometimes, sometimes you're up against production and that can be stressful. Whereas TV is a little more, you know, methodical. Mm -hmm. because it's, they, they have a, they have a structure and a format and it's kind of like laid out for you. Um, whereas with film, sometimes you're kind of, it's all hands on deck and you're just kind of scrambling to, to get something in the can. Um, 
but I think they're the, to me, they're pretty similar. I think it's more a matter of knowing what movie or what TV show you're in. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you've seen those scenes where you see, you see an actor that you're like, wow, you're in a different movie than the rest <laughs> of these people. And, um, you know, and I, I, so I feel like it's, it's riding that line of, of bringing different colors and different, like I said earlier, different instruments to the symphony. But then at the, but at the end of the day, making sure that you're in the same movie. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, and I think, I think that's really important. I think that's really important. Um, I, I think in some ways I, I mean, listen, power has been the most incredible thing in my career and, and hands down, hands down. And I would do it for the rest of my life. And I don't know if that's going to happen, but, um, but I would. You're like a, you're like I a cat it. on that show, bro. You got, you got, you're at like right? 11 lives now. <laughs> I know, but, um, but I'm, you know, I am excited about the future because I do feel like there are going to be some exciting opportunities for me to, uh, to branch out, to play some different characters, some stuff that, and the other, the other thing that's interesting is like, I'm so not like Cooper Sacks in my life. That's what I was going to ask you. What, what, what would you say the difference is between, Shane Johnson and Cooper Sacks. They were to meet in the bar. Well, this, the similarity is that I try to like bring humor and kind of try to look at things a little bit askew in my life. Like that's just who I am. But, um, but you know, I, I, as a human, Shane Johnson is, he's operate, I operate from a place of empathy and from, love for my for my family for my friends and for I, I love nothing more than to see people win and um and a cooper sax is more of a how do i get ahead how do i make my family like me how do i how do i get the accolades how do you know he's just kind of a, a bit more strategic and um and cutthroat and 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 willing to to bend his ethics in order mm -hmm. to accomplish his goal Shane is not. And, um, and I also think that Cooper is somebody that kind of is, has a bit of a solitary existence. You know, he's kind of, he's kind of created a world where he's, he's, he's alone in a lot of ways. And, and Shane is, Shane is like surrounded by love and by great people, you know? Um, I will say going back to something I think that's important is for those of us that are a little older, mm -hmm. like I'm, 40, I'm 45. So for those of us that are a little older, it's, and our artists are in this business, it's such, it's so important that we just suck it up and figure out Instagram and figure out whatever it is that we need to figure out so that we can be, you know, cause a lot of people resist it. They're like, well, I don't need, I don't need to do that shit. I don't need. And it's like, dude, you, you get, that's where we're headed. You know, I hate it, but we, I was forced to. I mean, literally, I, I hate social media, but we have to because it's, just, it's, it's the part of the game. Unfortunately, it, it's, it's a, it can be toxic. It can be very, can very be toxic, toxic. And, 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 and very um, time-consuming. You know, yeah. I, I, over the years, I've limited my use to it, but, but it's a vessel. It's part, of the, it's part of the vessel now of the business. You know, so, like, for you, like, obviously, you know, you being – a family man, your wife, obviously being in the business as well. Yeah. How Keely's have you family. guys been able to balance both? Because again, you see so many people that are, that are in this industry where you got two people in the same game and usually those relationships don't last very long, you know, right. because it's a constant chase of not being seen each other. So how, for you, have you guys been able to sustain such a beautiful relationship, a beautiful family, and, and maintain, and especially for, you know, for other actors that are starting off on their journey and they're in a relationship and the sacrifice, what advice would you give them and how have you made it work? Well, that's a great question, man. I think that's really important in this industry, um, in particular in this industry, uh, for, for me, the magic has been this. I, it, cause it wasn't always that way. Like we, for, for quite a while, my wife and I were kind of I, I, almost competitive with each other, mm -hmm. you know? Cause it was like, well, who's, who's got work, who's got 
opportunities who's and and we, and we were like button heads and you know it was a frust frustration a lot of times with each other and, do you think it's competition it almost, or more pushing each other no i think at the time it was it was kind of like not it was being a little bit more s selfish okay. for each of us you know and I think the big shift in our relationship, which has been a long time ago now, probably 15 years ago, we've been, we've been together 22 years. So. Wow. Congrats, man. That's the, beautiful. Thank you. So the, the, uh, the shift was probably about 15 years ago when I realized that, that she was more important to me than, than any of this other stuff. And that, that the, way, the way to keep her close to me was to be interested in what she was doing and what she, what her dream was and, 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 and including her in mine. And so as soon as I started, and the same for her, as soon as I started going, hey, I have this thing, will you help me with it? I, want, I would love for you to be a part of it. It totally transformed our relationship because it was like, as opposed to me having my stuff over here, you know, and her having her stuff over here like this, it was like, hey, you're my team. If there's mm -hmm. a team, if there is a team in life, if there's a team in life, it's my wife and kids. That's my team. Mm -hmm. You know. And so why would I? Why would I be like this? And so when I just laid the cards on the table, I was like, hey, so this, these are the cards I'm dealing with. What cards do you have? Let's see if we can make a full house here. You know. And um, and so between us both kind of approaching our relationship that way, I started to become so much more interested and passionate about her and her talent and about doing work with her. And so we've, you know, we've collaborated on probably, gosh, at this point, probably seven different projects over the years and, and not always in the same hat. Like sometimes she's acting in it and I'm producing it or she's producing it. I'm acting in it or we're both acting in it. Um, and, and seeing her win as opposed to it being, if you're in a relationship where you, I'm not even talking about a wife or, or a boyfriend or, 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 a, or a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, or it could be a friendship, an acquaintance. If you see somebody winning mm -hmm. and your, your initial response is like, fuck, fuck. <laughs> then you need, to, you need to hip check yourself mm -hmm. because you've got to, you, you're fucking, you're turned around, man. And that, and by the way, but I you see some of, there's so many actors in this business that are bitter that way. Like when they, when they get an, oppor an opportunity or you get an opportunity and they didn't get it. Like I've always looked at them like, especially if it's my friends, as you said, family, if it's my friends, say we're going for the same role and they get it. I'm happy for them, but it also motivates me because, and especially being a black man in the business, when there's this small margin, it's like, okay, the way I look at them, like you're opening a door that we didn't have before. And to me, it should motivate you and inspire you to say, okay, you know what, to stay hungry. Because it's, as you know, like there's, it, it's very hard at times because, you know, this business, I believe, it's a mental game more than anything. Because as I said, the yeah. rejection, the, 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 I mean, I tell you, if, if, you, if you're in the business for making money, there's a lot easier job. Like, there's a lot yeah. easier things you can do yeah. to make money than become an actor or whatever. Buy some, buy some Dogecoin. <laughs> exactly. You know? But, like, for, for you, in the sense, like, obviously, as I said, like, having that, as you said in the beginning, that power struggle, how did you guys come to the balance medium? I think, I, well, it was a struggle. It was a struggle for a while. It was, it was, but it was pretty magical. And I mean this. It was magical to... The same with friends, because I'm not going to lie. I had friends. I think it's very human to kind of, like you said, go up for something that your friend is up for, right? And then they go on and book it. And, and it becomes like a big success and they get the money and the notoriety and the sort of the thing that you're after. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's frustrating, right? And so how do you, how do you kind of like take that frustration and let it, like you said, motivate you. And at the same time, go, but I'm fucking happy for my friend. And if you're not happy for your friend, 
then that's where that's the work you need to do. And that's okay, by the way, we're all human beings. Like if you, if you're, if you're not happy for your friend, it's okay, mm -hmm. but look at it, start analyzing it because can you imagine if you win and you're fucking kicking ass and, and your friend goes, Hey man, how's it going? And you're like, Oh man, like, I'm just, I'm so, I don't even know what to do. Like things are just taking off. I'm so excited right now. Like I got this and I got that. And they're like, Oh, Oh, um, well, shit, man. Good. That's great. Good for you. Good for you. Um, I'm happy for you. And you're like, whoa, this dude is like totally bummed out that I'm winning. Mm -hmm. And we all, I get rid of those people, bro. Right? I, I get rid of those people because to me, it's, it's, <laughs> me I don't, I, I, it's energy. And it's like, it, it, and, and I think we have this thing that people like they find in life that I always say, like, People are either going to make you grow or stay in the same place. And I think whoever you're around, if you're not growing, you're not learning. If you're not learning, you're not building. And I think it's, it's come to the point where, like when you get here and you got friends that are down here, it's almost the point where they expect you, like you, some people just, they start feeling bad where they feel, okay, well, I've got to like go back down to make them feel comfortable. And I'm like, fuck them. Like, if I'm up here, you got to catch the fuck up. Like, I'm right. not going to go back and lower my, Like, I already went through that shit. And to me, as you said, there's no difference between, doesn't matter what job you're in or whatever. Like, it's a, it's a discipline to put in the work. And I think that's what I don't like now in the industry about social yeah. media. Because for you, like, how do you deal now with the success that you've had now? And people saying, hey, Shane, put me on. Put me on, put me on, put me on power, put me on this or yeah. give me an opportunity. How do you deal with that? Well, I try to be, a, you know, some, some, I, I don't answer everything, but, mm -hmm. but I do, I do try to answer most things and, and I'll just be honest. I'll say, look, because those people just don't understand the way the industry works. Like I, the, the person who cast me in this movie, actually going back to what you were saying earlier is because I, I play baseball, right? So I was really mm -hmm. into baseball. And I, um, I was up for the movie 42. Wow, and, wow, okay. And I was close to getting it. I don't know how close, but it was in the mix and it was going on for a while, like probably six weeks or so of back and forth. And Vicki Thomas cast it. Well, Vicki Thomas cast Power. And so she brought me in because she was like, oh, this guy's great. And um, I, I can't remember why, why I was telling you that. Um, why was I telling you that? I've been drinking too much, dude. <laughs> Hold that thought while you catch it. Guys, don't forget, if you're just joining us tonight, welcome to another edition of Sunday Service. I'm your host, D Tough One, on the MIC, HotTopicCelebTV.com. Tonight, joining us in the building, the infamous, the legendary Shane Johnson, a.k.a. Cooper Sacks from the Power Series and Power Book 2. If you guys have a question <laughs> for Shane, please drop it in the comments below. You can follow me at D-T-E-F-L-O-N and drop me a message, comments, you can also follow Shane on Instagram. You can find us on iHeartRadio. Don't forget, each and every Tuesday night, it's Hot Topics Radio TV after dark. And every Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Hollywood actors, directors, producers in conversation. Continue. Man, you got that down. <laughs> um, so so I, what I was, this is what I was going to say is that I, I just am honest. I'm like, look, that's not how the way, it, that's not the way it works. I, cause my point in telling you the story about Vicki Thomas and the casting mm -hmm. director is that, is that I actually went and auditioned for Vicki who I, who's incredible and obviously has changed my life. I auditioned for her a couple years later for an, some other project. And I was like, Hey, thank you so much for, you know, helping me get on power. And she was like, Oh, is that still on? Like, she cast the pilot and she's moving on with her life. So mm -hmm. totally different casting directors. We've had like maybe four or five different groups of casting directors. Right. Okay. And so for, for somebody to reach out to me and go, Hey, I want to be on power. I think I could this or that. It's like, that, that's awesome. And I'm, I, I hope that happens for you, but, but, but I'm an actor too. Like I can't, I don't have, I can't call up the casting director and said, Hey, somebody reached out to me on Instagram and they said that they're right for this role. Like that, that never happens. That never happens. And what I can do is say, look, if you're serious about being an artist, about being an actor, I can turn you on to a path that 
can lead you to what you're after, which is why I like, I, you know, it's one of my things I'm really proud of is like, there's recently, you know, I studied with Richard Lawson. Yeah. I was about to get into that next. Tell, tell people about and, your school, Richard Lawson studios. Yeah. So when, so I've just recently turned somebody on to him I, and, and then they didn't know anything about it, but they went and started studying with Richard and they just booked their first TV show. Right. And this is this is over the course of maybe three or four months. Mm -hmm. They went from they went from going, "Hey, how do I do this?" to me going, "Please give these guys a phone call. Let them know that I sent you, because mm -hmm. I'm part of the team, right? I'm part of this this studio, and they'll look out for you." And now the person's working in the industry, and it's like, to me, that's so worthwhile. But but to to try to bypass the work and to try to bypass the system and just have somebody go like, "Here you go." It just it mm -hmm. really doesn't work that way unless unless you're related to somebody that is producing something, then call them for sure. But do you uh, feel like that? Do you feel it's a slap in the face when like as, like I get it all the time with people when I find now like we live in an era of entitlement, like people feel that they're owed this where you, me and many of others who have gone through that journey have had to put in the work. We've got to get our ass kicked. We've got to get shit on. We've got to get, you know, dirt thrown in our faces. Do you feel that it's a slap in the face when there's people that either A, want to bypass it, or you see people that are bypassing it? Because now, as you know, as you said, like, the business is not, it's not even about talent anymore. It's about fucking social media numbers. How many followers do you yeah. have? How many, how many likes do you have? And I'm like, I don't give a fuck yeah. how many likes you have. Like, to me, like, likes... And followers, unless you've got a million dollars in the in the bank from those million followers, it means nothing. So how, like, how do you deal now with the industry, as you know, changing with especially even now COVID times where, as you said, before there was over 500 different productions out there. Now things have gotten smaller. And now you're seeing, obviously, when we started, there was daytime, there was prime time, and then there was motion picture film. And you sort of, you know, you have to make a choice. Yeah. Either I'm going to go into daytime, I'm going to go into prime time to hopefully lead me to film. But now it's like and you're commercials, seeing the, right? and commercials. And now you're seeing like the biggest names in the industry. Take, for example, your show that are now coming on these prime time shows yeah. and taking away, like, for example, like, like if, if a Denzel Washington wanted to be on power, he could be on fucking power. But then that means for the other actor yeah. who's on the grind is probably not even going to get seen or called because Denzel wants to be in the movie. So, like, for you, have you ever been in a, in a position where, like, you know, you wanted something but didn't get it and it was taken by, you know, somebody that you felt that either wasn't deserving or didn't earn it or wasn't even as good? I mean, I... I... I have felt that way so many times in my career. I mean, not, not, not in the last decade because I've, I just have moved off of that. That's kind of, when I was younger, I would go up for something that I was really passionate about. And I, and I was just like filled my heart with like, Oh my God, this is happening. This is, mm -hmm. it. and then like, I remember here's an example of one. I was up for this thing on the West wing and, um, and I was like, Oh, shit this is happening and it was feeling like it was going to happen right okay and uh, it was a great arc and then at the last minute that matthew perry stepped in and was like oh i want to do it and so matthew okay. perry matthew perry got it and then he got nominated for an emmy for it right and i'm like good for him i'm mm -hmm. not complaining about that but i'm just like oh this fucking business because if it comes down <laughs> to it because if it comes down to it and this is what kind of what we're talking about about and I get it. There's a biz. It's, it is a business. It's show business. Mm -hmm. So, so they're going, look, Matthew Perry is going to draw more eyes than Shane Johnson. And that's true. I would put my acting and I'm not, I'm not criticizing his acting, but I'm saying, but I would go toe to toe with Matthew Perry. Mm -hmm. actor. But, but that actually doesn't even enter into the equation. It's not the point. The point is, is that he's Matthew Perry. Mm -hmm. And I have to just respect that and go like, Hey man, that's the business. So to your point earlier, Yes, it fucking sucks that we're in this Instagram, TikTok sort of world where somebody can come out and do some cool little funny video about their dog 
Mm-hmm. All, of a, all of a sudden, they have four hundred thousand followers, <laughs> and and they're an influencer now because mm-hmm. you know, they did they did some funny meme or they took a basketball shot from across the street and they made it, um, or they flipped a bottle and it landed on the lid or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. And now they're an influencer, and you're going, holy shit! I spent forty years developing a craft, <laughs> and I just got bypassed by some. For- you know what I mean? <laughs> no, and it, it's true because I see. I mean, I see it every day, and I and I and I just go like, and that's why I said like to me the industry. It, it's 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 like it's like a time warp right now. Like you 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 don't even I don't even know what direction sometimes it's going because it's like you when you when you see people getting passed up, you know, yeah, yeah. for opportunities, and I don't care about my myself. I even have friends where I'm like. How, like how, like how, like 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 what are what are these these agents even even in and casting directors like what is really their focal point? Is it so for you? Like, how do you deal with, or have you ever had a situation even on power? Have you ever picked up a bad script where you just really weren't feeling the material, but you have to say it anyway? What's your approach to that? That's a, that's a, I love that question because I feel like, I feel like as our, as, as actors, it's important for us to approach material from the standpoint of, and this is a Richard Lawson thing Mm -hmm. is that the, the author is a genius until proven otherwise. Right. Okay. So what that means to me is do everything because a lot of actors will come in and go like, Oh, I wouldn't say it this way. I wouldn't do that. Oh, that doesn't feel right to me. Or um, this is better. And, it, and it's like, you know what? You're just, you're putting. Hold on. Your a, fan, a fan just said, well, sorry, I'll go back to that. A fan just said, guys, watching Possession of Michael King, if you didn't get this, the legend is, the acting of Shane is legendary. And it's true, guys. <laughs> so if I, you haven't seen that film, you. you need to watch it. Continue, bro. Um, and, and I just, I, so anyway, I think that, um, God, what was I saying? I've got to slap, stop, slow down. Hold on, I need, I need my breaks, dude. <laughs> Don't worry, man. Take your time. I'm, I'm, we're, 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 this is like drink champs right now. God damn it! <laughs> damn it! Um, I actually don't remember what I was saying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the comment about the Michael King. That's awesome. But I no, anyway, I I just feel like we have to. Um, God, what was I talking about? You were talking oh, about. You were talking about finding material you're talking about material yes, that material and what you do with a bad script and so i feel like it's important to to do everything you can to find a way to elevate the material mm-hmm. and and it's and it's sort of like synergy right like mm-hmm. the author the author gives you something and you may judge it but you shouldn't ideally I mean, granted, listen, we've all had, we've all had those scripts, especially like sometimes you'll get these indie scripts that you're like, oh my God, this is fucking terrible. Right. And maybe those are the things that if you're not desperate, that you just go, I'm not auditioning for this or, or you go in and you go, you know what? I'm going to elevate the shit out of this material and show them and help them by bringing synergy between what their vision is. Okay. And what I can bring to it. And hopefully, hopefully we find a kind of happy marriage of, of, you know, they, they go, holy shit. It's not exactly what I wrote, but it's actually, it's actually better than what I wrote. Um, that's okay. But I think that the, the first, the most important thing is to start from a place of how do I make this material my own? Mm hmm. I'll admit something to you. Actually, I did have a script. I did have a script recently that I was like, no. Was this on power or is this a different project? I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say, but it was, but it was, I was like, no, this is not in line with, with who I am. And Mm -hmm. I don't mean who me, I mean who the character is. Right. Okay. And so I was like, okay, so how do I, how do I wrap my creative brain around this? And so what I did is I went to the, I went to the writer and I went to the mm-hmm. director and I was like, so listen, um, which is by the way, very uncomfortable to do. And I was like, I, I don't think, I don't think I, I would do this. 
Mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think my character would like would 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 say this unless I, and, and but I framed it in a way that I was like unless I'm misunderstanding unless I'm missing something mm-hmm. because if correct me if I'm wrong but this is who this character is right and they're like yeah and I'm like okay cool cool so that's who he is then how the hell does he get to this point mm-hmm. you know what I mean and and so we found the like happy medium but that's rare. Usually, usually it's, it's, it's just figure it out. Mm-hmm. I just, I just figure it out. I try to, I, I try to be 100% accurate and true to this script because I feel like it's paying respects to the author, to the writer and letting them kind of know that I respect and appreciate their work. And that my job is to, like an like a saxophone player, my job is to look at their their shit and go, okay, now how do I how do I put that through this instrument and bring it to life? As opposed to going like, nah, I don't like that. This is more fun. You know so you've I mean? had like some famous one liners on power and stuff like that. How much yeah. of that has been ad libbing and more script? Well, earlier on, I would say that there were quite a few of those were a combination of both where I would kind of deliver something that they had written in a way that they just did not see it being delivered. And I think that the writers started to write for that. Okay. The writers, the writers really liked this sort of humor and this sort of like snarky, arrogant, bullshitty sort of <laughs> energy. Mm-hmm. And they started. And so then they started writing for that. Writing that way. They started having fun with. And so then I would start to see, the one-liners and scenes where I was like, oh, they totally are, we're in the same vibe, right? Like, they get it. I would say most, I would say 85% of those are written. And maybe 15% of them are me kind of throwing throwing a little something on it and them, and always with approval. Mm-hmm. Usually, usually I'll do something at a table read and the writer will go like, oh, that's great. And they'll add it to the script. You had you 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 so you've had like you know this long eight year run on the show dodging Jeez, bullets yeah. literally yeah, and like fucking val- like like <laughs> the I'm matrix like Neo. I'm like Neo. <laughs> so like for you like and you had you know the opportunity to work with such incredible talents Amari Natori Joseph Cora yeah I mean fifty it, it's it's like to me it, it's like a master class of the best of the best. So like for you, what would you say one, your growth from Shane Johnson as an actor from season one to Shane Johnson as an actor to season eight and also working on the show with this tremendous talent, even now with Method Man and Mary J. Blige, you know, what have you learned from each actor and we can go down go down and i'll give you like a word association of each actor like what have you learned from working with each person layla omari 50 but we'll start in a sense with 50 what have you learned from being on the show from season one as an actor to now what have you learned from working with him Uh, see this bad boy right here Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hustle harder, hustle smarter. You know, 50, man, you got to love 50. He, he's a great, he's a great dude. He's, he's the real deal. He's like an entrepreneur. He's positive. He, I mean, I know he does a lot of online. He does a lot of shit talking. He's somebody that is like my age, which is crazy to me that we're the same age. But, but he, he's uh, he's mastered social media, right? Mm-hmm. Like he's some he's somebody that could have just disappeared in the age of social media, and instead he's like dominating it and, <laughs> and killing it, and and he's really figured out his brand, like his shit talking sort of brand, and mm-hmm. it really really works for him. I with with him. With 50, I would say the thing that I have learned from him is it's okay to be exceptional. 
It's okay. True, dude. Spoke the words out of my mouth because I've always said I had this conversation just last night. You know, there's there's almost a point that like when you deal with the social media era, and as you said, like in the first part, you said it kind of bothered you when you were getting the hate. And to me, you have to, and I think people have to understand is that like when he's getting hate of a character, like I see in the comments, you know, people, I hate him, I hate him, but I love him. That means you're doing your fucking job. Right. Like you literally yeah. are doing your job. When you are doing your job at the point where it, like for me, like the character that I have coming up for the Dorner series, I play a character which was, if you guys know the story of Christopher Dorner, um, I was part of the SWAT team that shot up these old ladies on the pursuit of Dorner and literally like 107 bullets and we all got acquitted. And, you know, and, I, and for me, when people were like asking, like, why would you want, I'm like, I like complex. I like complex yeah. rules that, you know what, that, that make people sit and think and think for a minute, like, this is unacceptable. But even the things that Cooper Sachs does, this is everyday real life shit. Like, it's not acceptable for TV, but this shit, there's actually people in our judicial system that act and do those things literally, you know, and get away with it. And this is where, to me, I'm like, when I'm watching you, as you said, getting hate, getting hate and getting hate and getting hate, I'm like, he's doing his job. But when you're that good at what you do, why should you apologize for it? Why should you apologize for, for greatness? Because remember, you worked your ass off to yeah, get yeah. to this opportunity. You, as you said, you didn't just do You didn't just dodge bullets as Cooper Sacks on the show. You dodge bullets in life because that's what this business is about. It's about taking those hits like 50 did with all those bullets going into his body. You take the yeah, same, the same injection in the business is to be able to take the, the online hate, to take the naysayers, to take the negativity. Every one of those things is bullets of, it's not where you're invincible, but you have to have this sort of, and it's sort of like where people ask me like where the Teflon came from. I'm like, Think about it. I love it, man. I All the things it. that I've been through in my life that it would kill a lesser person, health, mental, all the things that I've gone through. Shit but I'm still stick. fucking... Exactly. Yeah. I'm still here. And it's like, when I look at Cooper Sacks and I look at, in a sense, the character, and he is like Teflon. Like, no Sachs, matter... Sacks is, by the way, French for Teflon. Is it? It's... Uh, it's... <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Would but no, but awesome it's, 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 it be, it, it's true. And so to you, like, for example, as you said, like, you know, learning from him of to not apologize for being great, continue from there. Yeah. I, so I, I, and I'm just inspired by the fact that he's, you know, not satisfied with, with the ordinary course of things. Right. Mm -hmm. He's always looking to disrupt. He's always looking to challenge himself to, try something new to expand his brand. And, and at a certain point, some of these guys like 50 and, and the rock and Mark Wahlberg, you almost got to want you, you, you almost ask yourself why, like, wh at what point are you satisfied? <laughs> at what point, at what point do you go? At what point does the rock go? You know what? I think I have enough money or I think I have enough fame or whatever it is. It's like, but something is driving, something is driving those guys. And man, I fucking, I want more and more of it. Like I have a degree of it, mm -hmm. but I'm not, I'm not quite driven at that level. And but you know what drives them? You want to really know what drives them? Because I can, I can speak for this from my own personal experience from almost dying. Is that, and I've also lost my house on a fire a couple years back. When you lose everything, everything, 50 was shot laying on the ground. I was stabbed laying on the ground. The Rock, who his dream was to be a football player, went to the NFL, got cut, got yeah. basically six bucks. Sent to, sent to Canada, right? Yeah. Sent to Canada. And he's got yeah. six bucks in his pocket. People don't understand, when you lose everything, it's not when you say, okay. And then he lived in Florida. He was probably exactly. near you. Exactly. And when you, when, you, when you end up in a place where you're not supposed to be, it's not where the fact where you think you when's enough. You just have this fear 
of it being back in that place again. Like being broke, being homeless, being all of those things. And, and, and you also learn in life, you only get one opportunity to be great. You only get one opportunity to actually shine because we're not here for a lifetime. We're really only here for a moment. Like life seems long, but we're really only here for a moment. Man. So what impact are you actually going to leave when your day comes? What do you want to be? What do you want to be remembered by? Because you got to, you know, as well as I do, bro, being in this business, power could end today. Literally could end today. Like the whole yeah. network could end today. And then, you know what happens? What? People yeah. move on. They're not talking about Cooper Sachs three years from now, four years no. from now. They're, they're, they're on to a new show. So that's where you, you, you have to, as you said, make your mark while you're, while you're here and, and, and leave a, a, a legacy. So, like, again, like, and be willing you, to like as you said. Your, the, and be willing to reinvent yourself, right? And mm -hmm. this is why this is, this is the social media thing. It's what you're doing right now, man. Like you're, you're reinventing yourself. You're I'm, I'm not saying that you're, you're getting rid of the old, but you're going, you're adding to, you're adding to the brand. You're adding a whole section that exists that you could have just said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not interested. I'm not going to do this, but you have, you have added to the brand an entire new platform. Um, business, yep. a new yep. platform. This is and, because you know why? Because for me, it was like, you know, as well as I do We're, in this business, when you're not being creative, you lose your fucking mind. Like you literally, and for me, when I was like sitting in the house, sitting in the house, sitting in the house, and I, and I, I had other things, you know, that I was doing because I'm like, you know, I'm always got my hand in dipped in a bunch of things, but I was like, I can't ke really get to connect with friends the way that I want to. Can't hug anybody. Can't see anybody. But I also always believe, and I think you're, this is why you do what you do with your school. I come from an era of pay it forward. And I, and, I, and I believe in the fact that everyone's got a story. And when I share your story and I share another person's story, to sort of say, okay, like, you know what? It's not puppies and rainbows always. Like, the, it, it's like, it's like, like, a, like a climb. Climbing, the, you know, that song, Miley Cyrus, like you're climbing a tree, like, you know, you're, you're, you're it's actually a pretty great, a pretty great song, actually. It is, you know, yeah. and you're climbing a tree in the sense, number one, to the journey. So like for you, like when you, when you see of, of, as you said, like not being the guy that, you know, uh, is that ambitious the same way 50, have, have you, has your mindset changed now after reading the book and getting to know him and seeing the things that he's done? Well, I mean, in some ways, to be honest, those those guys, I don't know that I'm willing to make the kind of sacrifice that like The Rock has to make. You know, he's somebody who has so many things going on, such a huge brand that he's um, that like, how much time does he get to spend with his family? How much time does he get to hang with his friends? How much time does, you know, um, now, granted, he's he's exceptional in that he's there's only one. <laughs> Wayne Johnson, right? Mm -hmm. But, but like, my family and my kids, at, especially at this age, you know, they're they're eleven and fourteen. So, the next, and I've been doing power since they were like three and five. It's been mm -hmm. you know, two and five. It's crazy. But, you know, I want to be with them. I want to be as there as much of an influence as I can, and once they're kind of blossomed and into the, their own lives and their thing, it's a little bit different, but the thing that, like I said, I'm really excited about. And I think the thing that's really exciting about our industry right now, as much as <laughs> social media is all that bullshit is that you, you and I and people like us, we have a unique opportunity in that the power is shifting. And I don't think people are quite sensing it yet, but the power is shifting from, guys in suits at studios to creatives who can actually produce the material, make the material, mm -hmm. you know? Be so, so right now we're kind of beholden to somebody sitting behind a desk going like, um, okay, so I guess this meets all the marks and it has enough celebrities in it and it's within the, our budget and it meets this algorithm. And so, yeah, we'll say yes to this. It's like, 
the days of that are numbered. Mm -hmm. The days of that are numbered. It's like, well, who's attached to it? It's like, um, well, fuck you. You know, what's attached to it is incredible talent and a great fucking script and an incredible product. What else do you need? Like, do you, you think need now, because you, do know? you think now because of, of streaming and the access that we have with these cable networks, that it's like storytelling doesn't matter anymore to a lot of these, these, these things because it's all about numbers now. Do you feel that, that the storytelling art has been taken away from the business? I think that people have grossly mis, misunderstood what fans and, and the marketplace wants. Here's an example, and this to me says it all. Shonda Rhimes, okay. right? Shonda Rhimes, who you, you, incredible. She's had an incredible career, created all these incredible products. Now she's got another hit on Netflix, whatever, Bridgerton or whatever, right? So she creates Grey's Anatomy. It has a couple of, I don't want to call them has-beens because I fucking hate that term, <laughs> but, it has a, but it has a couple of people who were successful, like Isaiah Washington and mm -hmm. Patrick Dempsey, who were kind of a big deal at a, at a certain point. But they really weren't anymore. They weren't current, right? Mm -hmm. But other than those two guys, which weren't selling tickets or making people show up, it was mostly... And Catherine Heigl. It was a whole sea of nobodies, mm -hmm. right, at the time. A whole sea of nobodies. It didn't fucking matter because it was compelling storytelling and it was an interesting show and people got sucked into these characters and to the energy and the connection and the charisma between them all. Mm -hmm. and, so, and then they come to Shonda and they say, hey, you're, you've obviously created this incredible fame. Can you do it again? We want you to do it again because we want to expand your brand. We want to like, catch lightning in a bottle again. So then they go and they make private practice, mm -hmm. right? And on private practice, they hire like seven celebrities. They're all fucking huge stars. Okay. And you're like, you totally missed the whole fucking point. This was supposed to be about people and the energy between them and the connection of the characters and the story and the, the, the way that they relate to each other. It wasn't about how famous they were. Okay. So why the fuck is Shonda Rhimes going and making? And I'm not. I mean, if she hear, if she's hearing this right now, she probably is thinking the same thing. It's why private. It's why private practice only lasted a handful of years, whereas Grey's Anatomy is still fucking going. Mm -hmm. right? It's still fucking going. Um. Because they hired like Tay Diggs, Amy Brennerman. Um. They like if you look at the cast, uh, uh, the dude from Wings. If you look at uh, the cast of private practice it was kate walsh and then like five hand-picked celebrities okay and it didn't fucking work i mean i was on it i actually had a good time on it but but it, it didn't really work and and it was because i i just feel like we have put way too much attention on celebrity mm -hmm. so what you know, i mean I, what do you what do you feel the formula the, the, with that formula what do you feel what's made the formula for power work? I think it's fucking great material. It's like Queen's Gambit. Nobody knows who the fuck that girl is. Mm -hmm. But everybody was like enraptured by Queen's Gambit. Right? And now when somebody wants to make another, like, oh shit, that was incredible. We got to make one again. That You know what they're going to do? They're going to go and try and find some big celebrity to, to, do this, to do the product. And it's like, you missed the whole fucking point. Nobody cares. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares who that girl was. All they cared is that what they care about when they watch that show is that it fucking spoke to them and they connected with it. And she was in it, in it. She's an incredible actress, but it doesn't matter who she is. Now she's, now she's everywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. But prior to that, she was like, did you know who she was? Maybe you haven't seen the show, but my point is, it's more important to make fucking great material that people can watch and be impacted by than that we have, well, how many followers does he have? It's like, who fucking cares? Bro? Cares. Who cares? Because guess what? The people that have shitloads of followers, they also make really shitty movies sometimes. Mm -hmm. But the thing is what I love about, for, about power, I mean, for you, like, like having, working with all these great actors who all seem to sort of come together and 
really turn this show into something really beautiful. What do you think made the, like, again, for you, like, what would you say your growth is as an actor from season one to now? And what did you feel that made the organic flow of the first aspect of power become such a cult hit between the cast? Like, what made that, that chemistry work? I think kind of what I was saying probably an hour ago to, was with the, when it comes to the symphony of the show, mm -hmm. you have Omari as this really sort of solid, quiet, empathetic bass line, right? Mm -hmm. So he's like, he's like the hub of the wheel. He's not necessarily full of color and full of a bunch of dynamics. He's kind of just, he's solid. What did you learn from working with him? Well, I didn't get to work with Strangely. I didn't get to work with Omari a ton. But um, what I learned from him is that, and it happens a lot in, in shows, is that you have, you do have a central character who is, is almost blank because he's the audience, right? He represents, or she, depending on the show, can represent the audience, whereas all the characters around them are really colorful and vibrant and bold. But that character who is at the center of it, like with Dexter, like you said with Dexter, he was like almost devoid of emotion, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that Omari was. Omari was feeling a ton, but he was quiet. He was quiet. You know, his still stillness. But Joe, <laughs> like Tom, Tommy's like <laughs> fucking explosive. But... But here's the thing that's important to note is that you can't have two people doing that. Mm -hmm. You can't have two Tommies. Also, you can't have two ghosts. Because if ghost is being all stoic and fucking empathetic and quiet and still and all that shit, and Tommy's doing the same thing, it's like, what's, ha what's happening here? Mm -hmm. And so the dynamics in the notes that we hit and the way that we relate to each other and find our sound the, the harmony of it is, I think, so vital to the success of a piece. And I think that we just, with power, I think we really found that. I think people were, were sensitive enough and open enough to kind of, especially early on, to kind of listen and be really aware of like, well, what, what is my note? Where is my, what is my sound? How do I lift, how do I lift this? And how do I not be, because it's funny with, with like a series, it's it's a symphony, but it's only it's only you only have like a handful of instruments, mm -hmm. so you don't want to have three violins. You know what I mean? You don't want to yeah. you don't want to have like two drummers. It's like no, you get one drummer. That's Tommy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you you have one you have one bass guitar, which would be like, which which would be like uh, Omari, mm -hmm. and then you have like some funky ass. You know, you have Kanan who comes in with some instrument that we don't know what quite know what that is, but it's violent. And it's, and it can turn on a, at a moment's notice. And then you have, you know, so everybody's finding their notes, but it's really mm -hmm. important that we're not the same instrument. And so when, with Omari, what I've learned is that sometimes there's a real power when you're the lead in something to stillness and in, in letting especially when you're the, which is what Dexter was too, is w when you're the conduit for the audience to see the world, it's important that you don't necessarily color it too specifically. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you like let the other characters do that because you're the center of like a galaxy and you have all these planets going around you, but you have to be a sense of gravity. And so I know that's really sort of a strange thing to say, but I think it's... No, I get it. I get it. I mean, yeah. I, I, it, to me, I, I think that, you know, every, it, when you're working with actors, it's like a formula. Like putting, you have, you're, you're putting together ingredients, you know, like and you're making something. And, you know, if one ingredient's off, then the whole thing becomes sour. But I think what's made the ingredients and the organic of this, of this show be some, become something that we want to drink up every single week is it feels like everyone shows up to work ready, like yeah, ready to sure. bring their best. Because I think that you, like, I mean, did you, 
when you first got casted for the show, did you have a feeling like this is going to be a hit? Like no. this is going to be No? No. No, not at all. Not at all. I I I didn't First of all, I didn't really know stars, right? I don't think anybody knew fucking stars before power. Well, all it's funny we power completely rebranded stars essentially because it was mm -hmm. the whole concept behind stars was taking you places and it was historical places like they had spartacus right which was based on the old movie spartacus mm -hmm. and was was like you know gladiator style shit and then um and then there was black sails was on there which was like a pirate show and then there was um Boss, which I actually think Rotimi was on Boss, which was with Kelsey Grammer. But most of the sh most of their shows were historical dramas. The White Queen, the Spanish Princess they have now. It was kind of like all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Spartacus is what put them on the map. So for Power, which was an urban drug drama placed in current day New York, was like, what? What does this have to do with your brand? But it became the brand. Because it was it caught an audience, and obviously it it struck notes with with people that was was bigger than I think we ever expected. I mean, but the, the but how do you but before. how do you feel what the, what the, the the massive numbers of this show does? Not getting the respect that it it should get from the academy on the opposite end, like winning an Emmy and winning like you know yeah, Golden I Globes, mean, like. That's it's really frustrating because even Outlander, which has which is a great show, mm -hmm. which is on it's on stars. I don't know if you know it, but it's it's on stars, but it has like half the audience that our show has, but it gets way more critical attention. OK. And to your point, I think that. I think the show deserves. I mean, granted, this year we won three double NAACP awards, which was awesome. But, but yeah, I think it deserves more attention in the awards circuit. But at the same time, like I feel like that shit is also part of the Instagram game too. You know what I mean? It's just like I feel like the even the Academy Awards now. I'm almost I, I hate to admit this as an actor who fucking loves our industry. I'm I'm not even that interested in the Academy Awards. I Near feel like my bro. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like it's horseshit. I feel like it's well, half the time they're playing games. They want to make sure that everybody feels recognized. They want to like make sure that they don't get in trouble because then they get too much heat if they don't if they don't if the right people don't win. You know what I mean? It's if the right if the if certain shows don't get nominated. It's just kind of like okay, what game are we playing here? You know. And Robert, so I, question. It, yeah, continue. Go. No, no, that's it. If if you if you right now could cast yourself in a different character other than Cooper Sacks from any cast member from the show, past, present, living or dead, who would you want to play? Wow. Um, well, I kind of touched on this briefly earlier, but I, I, I auditioned for Tommy mm -hmm. first. And then I auditioned for Greg Knox. Um, I, I was totally wrong for Tommy, but man, what a great fucking character. Um, that would be so much fun to play. I, w I mean, it would just kind of be such a different, it's such a different side of me. Um, I would have to really mine, you know, Joe, Joe just like slips into it so easily. So, so facile at that kind of stuff. But, um, even though it's not not my casting, the character that I would fucking love to play would have been Lobos. Yes. Second favorite character next to Layla. Or Angela. That was my second favorite character, like out of the entire I mean, Enrique, <laughs> man. Yeah. He killed that shit and it looks so so delicious and so fucking fun. And um man, if I the only thing that I regret as a fan of the show is that we didn't have him for like three seasons. He was I, I honestly so... thought that killing him off that quickly was a disservice for the, for the, for the show. I think that he could have been a guy that should have stuck around even to now. Like, like he just, 
he had a presence about him the way that mm-hmm. he played that character it reminded me of like a a cross between Antonio Banderas and Desperado mixed with Scarface <laughs> because yeah, the way was... he would remember in Desperado he was like yes yes he'd always have that that extra accent and and Lobos just had this way of of making everything feel so fun and exciting yeah. and like you know even if he was like about to kill somebody, you're, you're going to die today. But I'm going to make you sure you enjoy your death. Like it's, it's like it's like we were talking about earlier, man. It's just about it's about not it's because he he made such bold choices, right? Mm-hmm. Such bold choices, but they work, and he sold them. And he was like, I mean, it reminds me a little bit of it's kind of like guys drop in the movie. comments who your favorite character was from the show. Go on what Benicio del Toro might kind of do with something like that, where he would just come at it from, from, uh, from like, it's, instead of, instead of hitting it straight on, like, Oh, I'm a drug dealer and I have all this power. So I have to be like, fold my arms and carry a gun and have henchmen and shit like that. He was like the opposite. Mm-hmm. He was like emotional and sort of soft and, and colorful and like, intrigued by people and fascinated by the world around him. It was just like such a, it was great. I mean, it's, it's so hard not to like his, even when he was in like the moments before his death, he's still just sort of entertained by, by the world around him. It's just great. You know, he's uh so yeah, I would say Lobos, although clearly that's not my casting. I would say that that would be such a fun character to play. Who who would you like for you like for example obviously you said working with this this powerhouse of 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 talent who bring and now obviously you said working with the legendary Method Man what has that been like for you working with such a hip hop icon man I gotta tell you working with Method Man has been don't tell him I said this but has been probably the most fun I've had on the show. Um, he's just, he's everything you'd want from, from a co-star. You know what I mean? Um, everything you'd want from somebody that's, that you're working opposite where he's, he's loving, he's fucking bigger than life. He's, he brings great energy to the set. People want to be around him, and he's, and he wants to, he wants to bring it and he does. Mm-hmm. And and he wants to play. He wants to find things. And I mean, it's it's just been great. I, I mean, I can't. I I'll shut up there because because the truth is is I could I could talk about him for fifteen minutes. But he's <laughs> he's 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 my favorite man. He's like a great dude. And I I would like to think that ten years from now we will still be friends because he's just he's he's fucking great and he's a great artist. He cares. He he's grateful. He's thankful mm-hmm. to be part of our, you know, as opposed to coming and being like, because if I'm Method Man, I might come in and be like, I'm fucking Method Man. Mm-hmm. He's, he's just like, oh my god, this is so awesome to be a part of this world, and it's like, dude, you're Method Man, you know. But he uh, he's humble. He's he rolls up his sleeves and he comes to work. He comes to like try to find new ways to do to do shit and um yeah I, I i would say he he's my favorite human to like and plus i get to work with him quite a bit but he's my favorite human to show up and work with right now for sure so if 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 shane johnson was in trouble with the law and he had to call one lawyer or prosecutor to defend him out of all the characters who would he call proctor Sax, uh, Davis, Angela, or um, what was the what was the um, Tamika Washington? No, her as well, and the other one, the the one that Ghost killed, um, the one that was dating Tasha behind Ghost was back. Terry Silver, Greg? Terry, Terry, the guy Silver, who played right. Terry Silver. Who would who Brand, would you Brandon call Victor to the? Dixon, yeah. yeah, who would you call to represent you? Well, God bless Brandon, but he played he played uh, Tasha's love interest there for a while, but not him. Um, 
I would say it would have to be between Proctor and um, and Davis McLean, Method Man's character, because those are the two that seem to not be afraid to leverage and to um, twist the truth and kind of um, play play politics as well as law. Um, so I think if you're guilty, if you're guilty, they they stand the best chance of getting you off. Okay. That's what I think. If you're innocent, then maybe it's a different story. But if you're innocent, maybe Tamika Washington, played by Quincy Tyler Bernstein, who's fantastic. Who would you, who would you like? Okay, you and obviously like you you work with pretty much every of the majority of the actors on the show. Who who would you say is been where you've walked away from a scene and you're like? whoa, we put in some good work. Like, really made you bring your A game in a scene. Hmm. That's a good question. Um, well, I'll have two, I have two answers. Okay. Um, Quincy. Because she's, man, I've, I've seen Quincy on stage and multiple times, and that woman can fucking act her ass off. And so I'm, so I'm kind of intimidated by, by her prowess in general. So she just makes me show, sort of show up like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say that I feel that way about Joe. Because Joe Which Joe? Such, Joe, Joe Segura? Okay. Yeah, he's just such an incredible... He's just such an incredible actor. He seems so intense. Like, like I, I, I'm trying to. I obviously know he's very humble in the sense. Number one, in 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 real life, because I've watched a lot of his interviews and stuff. But like, he just seems like. I mean, like, a guy that's he. He reminds me of my late friend Heath Ledger. You know, when he gets into mode, he gets into mode, and it doesn't switch off until he goes home. Is 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 that what it's like on set for? playing these dark type of characters, even for you, like, do you, like, how do you shut off Cooper Sacks when you come home? You know, I don't get, and I don't think Joe does either. I don't want to speak for Joe, but I don't get lost in a character. Okay. I don't. Like, I, I did a little bit more with Michael, the possession of Michael King. That was a little bit different. But with Cooper Sacks, you know, I show up, I turn it on, I, I understand. It's kind of like I said, like playing a concert where you go in and you you play the character, you're you're jamming, and then when the concert's over, you're, the concert's over. Um, I don't take that home with me, um, and I don't think I don't think for the most part Joe would either. Um, it's probably it's a lot harder when you're playing a darker character though, mm -hmm. you know, when you're having to wrestle with concepts of like violence and betrayal and murder and you know that kind of stuff if you're i think if you're a real real artist it's it, it can it can mess with you a little bit and and being able to process it and shut it off is is really important you got to be able to like be all right that's that for today mm -hmm. you know I mean? so when you like when you started off in saving saving private ryan as your first gig and then fast forward to, you know, the horror aspect, then to now playing this character. First, for the people that haven't seen Private Ryan, what was your experience like that, working on that project first, um, working with Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg, then going on to, you know, the horror, and then now going on to this other spectrum of an actor? What is the difference for you between those three levels in your life because they're all happen at different points at like different times yeah for sure um well you know the thing with saving private ryan is that was kind of uh, i didn't really know what i was doing yet and it was okay. kind of like literally my first my first time being on camera um and so i was 
that it was an incredible experience and and hanging out and talk like i mean there was a time where i was hanging out underneath these tents and in a director's chair and spielberg came up and sat next to me and just hanging out with steven spielberg and talking for like 15 20 minutes about his family and his daughter and about and the whole time he's sketching on a napkin and he hands it to his dp and then his dp goes off and creates this incredible tracking shot that that was one of the iconic shots in the film and Mm -hmm. it was like you know it was it was an awesome experience in that sense the filming of of saving private ryan i was basically just terrified which worked because the character is supposed to be terrified too too (laughs) you know we're being um we're in war we're at war okay so so i you know i had spielberg with a bullhorn yelling at me during like close-ups and shit and i was like i felt like i wasn't getting it right okay and he was just he was so specific he was like open your eyes wider and i was like that's as far as they fucking that's it that's Mm -hmm. my eyes are my eyes are what my eyes are you know and he's like open open your eyes wider he's like slower slow down stop hitting it like that stop hitting it like stop saying sir like that say it like this and i was like i know and and i think that he was trying to freak me out and it totally works because in the movie i'm just fucking i'm like flustered and panicked and it's like of course that's what he's supposed to be it's d-day you know um and for those of you that haven't seen the film or haven't seen it in a while, it's I'm the guy that like shakes Tom Hanks out of this sort of the sound is vacuumed out of the film. It goes into slow mo and like the guy picks up his own arm and shit. And I shake kind of Tom Hanks out of it. And I'm like, dude, what are we supposed to do? And he's like, Whoa. and I'm like, you're the one that's fucking in charge here. And 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 really, that's kind of it. I was there for like mm-hmm. three weeks in mm-hmm. Ireland filming that and it was an incredible experience but i didn't have a whole lot to do um but it was a great experience i was green as fuck just Mm -hmm. learning and then you know michael king by that point that's we're talking like 15 years later doing michael king because that was 90s 1996 when i shot that i think something like what michael king no 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 uh, yeah uh, private ryan private ryan and so fast forward 15 years to Michael King and, um, you know, at that point I'd, I'd been through the, the trenches and really had um, studied and really understood my craft. And, and I really, when I got, when I got Michael King, I, I had really, really specific designs on what I wanted that, sh- that movie to be okay. and how I wanted to approach it. And, how I wanted the, how I wanted it to land on an audience, you know? Um, and I, I think we accomplished that. And then with, with Cooper Sacks, I mean, this is just the dream, right? Like it's, this is the, all of that shit that you're talking about. Cause you know, it's funny. Like we highlight things. We're like, Oh, saving private Ryan and Michael King and power. But amidst all that, there's, there are 50, 60 other projects, right? Of course. The, of different of different sizes and different success and different caliber and all that shit. But, but as, as like points on the graph, I would say power has kind of been the thing. The that, yeah, well, for sure. But it's also been the thing that all of those other experiences needed to happen for me, for me, for Shane, mm-hmm. maybe for some other actor, they show up in, in LA and they're like, there are, it's like, boom, they're, you know, like, like Michael Rainey Jr. Fuck. He's been on this show since he was 12 years old. You know what I mean? But for me, I, I needed, I needed the time to sort of craft and to figure myself out and to get my spirit right and to get myself, you know, in check. Um, so that I can be proud of what I'm doing and proud of who I am. Um, rather than just be successful, you know. So I'm going to hit you with some rapid questions, and then I won't keep you much longer. Um, First, I want to know, what would you, what would a Shane Johnson one back in 1997, if you could go back to this Shane Johnson now, what would you tell your younger self? Um, What would I tell my younger self? Mm Mm-hmm. What I would tell my younger self is n- never compromise yourself. Never compromise for the sake of, it's so easy to do. If somebody comes to you and they say, hey man, 
I got a million dollars. We're going to make this movie. Um, and I want you to do this. And you know right from the beginning, you're like, oh, my God, this is shady. This person is shady. This money is suspect. The script is questionable. But you're like, but it's an opportunity. Right? And we have a tendency when we're in, when we're down or when we're not there yet, mm -hmm. to like to jump at shit like that. And I would say, dude, don't ever fucking jump at easy money. Don't jump at easy money just because it's there. Like stick to your ethics, stick to your heart and to what you're about. Don't compromise. That's what I would say. You're Mount Rushmore. You could make a movie right now. You have unlimited budget and you could pick five actors living or dead to star in your movie with you who would it be wow that's pretty great um it's gonna be a weird it was, it's gonna be a weird grouping of people okay um bruce lee for a myriad myriad of reasons um i have a passion for martial arts and for martial arts movies and that kind of action and i love him and his spirit his being um and so that's so that's one next i have to say john malkovich okay john malkovich was just kind of for me a guy that I grew up going like, holy shit, this is that I want to be an actor because of John. Mal and I've got, I've, I've actually been able to work with him and tell him that, which was pretty awesome. That, that, and you know, that, that's the greatest feeling that I, because for me, it was the same thing with Kiefer. I mean, Kiefer was oh, yeah. my inspiration. And, and once I was able to first meet and then work with him, it was like, you know, I, I was like, if I die today, I'm good. Like yeah, I'm man. good. Like and, and and Morgan Freeman was probably second. Like it was like two people that you would you you almost have to pinch yourself and go like, am I in the fucking room here? Like am I actually yeah. in the room with royalty? And 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 what's beautiful about as they always say like you, goes back to what you were talking about earlier in the conversation about like there's some people that are just assholes, you know. And they always say never meet your heroes because sometimes they'll disappoint you. And when you're able to yeah. meet people that aren't that are your heroes that don't disappoint you. It's all worth it, man. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, and, and um, other than that, I would say, you know, somebody that I got to meet who um, I just feel like is so important to, for so many reasons, Sidney Poitier, who, uh, such a gentleman and in, such an incredible actor. Mm -hmm. um, and even though he kind of fell off the, the, the wagon there, and, it, and it, not, the wagon's not the right term, he kind of fell off and became a, a bit of a, you know, Marlon Brando is somebody that, that kind of stylized a new form of acting, really. Okay. Um, and so I would, say, I would say Marlon Brando. I mean, I'm a huge fan of, of Pacino as well. And and of course, you know, there's a, there's a whole bunch of people, but the, but I would say that those are the four I would stick with. Is um, you got one more? You got five? Cause five, oh, five, five in total. Yeah. So one more. Um, Let's throw a female on that list. Oh. <laughs> um. female someone's while you're thinking about that someone said ironically you're acting in michael king inspired me to pursue acting and now i'm moving to vancouver film school to see what's oh up oh my god that's see that's what that's what this shit's about man it's amazing um you know i i this is gonna sound crazy but There's this show um, on Netflix called uh, what the fuck's it? Dead to me? Is that what it's called? Dead to me with Elizabeth. I think so. Is it Elizabeth Shue? Yeah, I think it's called Dead to Me. Elizabeth Shue 
I mean, this is an unlikely person, you know, because that is be actually like, oh, very unlikely. You're like, you're like Glenn Close and, you know, <laughs> um, you know, people like that, that I could pull out. Um, mm -hmm. But, but I would say Elizabeth Shue is, has come so fucking far in her career. And she, that, that show is so good. And she is perfection in it that I just, I have so much respect for her. And, and I followed her career from all the way back to like, what are the, that babysitting movie that she mm -hmm. did? Remember? And then, and then she did, um, Friday, Friday kid. kid and uh I mean leaving Las Vegas with Nick Cage I mean she's she's had a hell of a career but um and in the boys too the boys is great if you haven't seen the boys no I haven't watched it yet but I, I know last oh, I haven't seen it I, I keep hearing about it but I'm one of people that like jumps on shit last because I'm like when I hear too much about it I'm like it's probably not that good and then it, it's a great show it's a great show but um anyway I so yeah, I'm gonna say Elizabeth Shue, which is I know the strangest, and people will be like, "What Elizabeth Shue?" But I'm fucking going with it. Okay, so my next question is gonna be, if you, if if a mysterious app appears on your phone right now, mm -hmm. and it could do something amazing, what would it do? Wow. Um. <laughs> uh, monitor my kids 24-7 <laughs> that's a that, good app or, man. or the other app would be is to is to like a day trading app that just took whatever money you had and just managed to like always at the end of the day make you like 10 20 percent on your money that would be pretty awesome automated money bro that'd be actually dope three words that best describe Shane Johnson, and three words that best describe Cooper Sacks. Shane, I would say compassionate, thoughtful, and funny. And Cooper Sacks, I would say um, narcissistic, funny. We share those. And um, selfish. Or ambitious. Okay. Ambitious. If your life was on the line mm -hmm. and you could make one phone call for someone to save you from power, who are you calling? Someone to save me from power. Mm -hmm. Well, this is going to have to assume that I'm in good in a good position with this person, but I think the person that's most loyal, driven by heart, and capable would have to be Tommy. Like if if I were in his universe, you know what I mean? Okay. Because I just think that motherfucker would like do whatever the fuck he had to do to show up. He he kill like twenty motherfuckers and drag your ass into the back of his car and get you out of there. You know. Going back from season one to season eight, what is your favorite scene of yours of playing Cooper Sacks, and favorite scene overall of any other actors on the show? Um, my, my favorite scene was probably that scene where I was masturbating and then got caught by, <laughs> by, um, Tommy and ghost and they come in and fucking almost kill me. Like that scene was just a lot of fun and it was, it was exciting, scary and all those things. And so that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, did you, I mean, I, I actually wanted to ask you about that scene because I, didn't you have like a, they put a bag over your head? And try to like choke. So th did you, was that, how much of that was, uh, you know, all in one take? Or was it, you know, we're going to choke the life out of you and make it real? Um, I mean, it was, I would say 50-50. Like it gets, okay. you know, when you're, when you're doing st stunts, that's a light, a light stunt, right? Where 
it's awkward because you're my ch- the chair is like leaning back. You have a bag over your head that's fucking balanced, and and it's it's hard to breathe, and it's and it's and you're doing it so many times. Like if you were doing it once, it'd be like, oh, mm-hmm. but we did it like thirty times or something like that. It was a lot, and so it, it ends up being exhausting and hard on your body and hard on your energy and shit like that. But, um, but I would say that it was still so worthwhile and it edited together really beautifully. Um, what was the other question? The other question would be in the, it was what was your favorite, favorite scene overall that you like, even um, if you weren't in it. Yeah. Yeah. I would say the scene where, where two, two things, because I'm, I'm really an emotional guy, I guess. Mm-hmm. But the scene where, where 50 is killed, where Kanan is killed. That scene got me too. And, and he decides to not fucking kill Tariq, but he, but he clocks him. Mm-hmm. The eye, the eye contact. Yeah. And it's like, there's a respect and it's sort of like a, I got you, even though you fucking just did me in. Like I got, I got to you. respect your gangster. I got to respect your gangster for that. That's what I felt, that, I felt from that scene. That and then the and then this scene. It, it, obviously, the whole fucking series climaxes to this. But when Ghost is like falling down, and they got that Jacob. I can't remember his last name, but the the, the, the version of this is a big rich town. Yeah, which is like that sort of haunting, really cool version of it. And it's all slow mo, and he's just fucking seeing his whole life leave him, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really impactful, especially because at the time, all of us took that shot. Like, we had like seven or eight people taking that shot. Like, we didn't know who it was. I mean, we had a suspicion, of course, but we didn't, we didn't really know, and they wanted to keep that under wraps who actually pulled the trigger. Mm-hmm. So we all, we all filmed versions of shooting him right and so when he's falling and it's god what is his name jacob um i anyway. just remember trying to find that song since it came out and i can't find it anywhere that version it's i know what version yeah, you're it, talking about if you if you type in big rich town but i couldn't i couldn't it, even find the jacob, artist it's jacob if you type in big rich okay. town and jacob it'll come up um for sure okay and anyway that that so those two scenes i think were my favorite scenes if you right now had to um, say covert was over and you're and you're going jacob on banks. Big, somebody just it's funny power jacob banks, banks? Forever, just jacob banks yes thank <laughs> okay, you okay thank, thank you, you thank you guys Wait, if I you shout, i gotta hold on i gotta shout somebody yeah somebody was like yep. you gotta shout me out it was ryan somebody ryan ryan lentz we're gonna take ryan also lentz. also guys too we're gonna take one fan to hop into this live before we before we oh, get yeah, off, yeah, let's do that. To do some questions, whatnot, but also want to if you if Cobra was to end right now, and you could go on a flight, ten hour flight, you could pick any person, living or dead, to travel with. Who would you want sitting beside you? Any person, living or dead, yes, traveling next to me. Wow, man, that's a big question. Um, we do big things here. <laughs> hmm. Boy, dude, man, that's good. You're gonna have to make me think about it. Um, Frederick Douglass. Wow. Okay. Wow, that's a really good answer. Why him? Just an incredible f- fucking story man to like to escape from slavery to then become an influential like an orator Mm -hmm. to become such an incredible influence upon present day culture to to try to understand what because this is a man who bridged very few people have had this experience right he bridged the gap between being a slave right and then, quote unquote, being free, okay, rec- recognizing that he really wasn't free, and then doing, and then having the courage, as opposed to giving up, 
having the courage to fucking put himself in harm's way and fucking do something about it and became obviously influential to Abraham Lincoln and to fucking the whole, you know, amendments that we've had and into to to be uh, a force that is still echoing today. Okay. But, but at the root of it, it was one man simply standing up for something that he saw that was, was, was wrong. Right. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like the, the, the impact that he's had on our culture is, is almost second to none really. Uh, although not a lot of people talk about Frederick Douglass, but I feel like he's had way more impact on us than damn near anybody. You know he's related to Kiefer, right? Kiefer Sutherland. Sutherland. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. know that. But he see the thing is is like Abraham Lincoln will will get the the credit, right? For the Emancipation Proclamation, for for you know the Civil War, for the for for, for siding with the North, for you know uh, ending ending slavery. But the truth is, none of that would have happened if it weren't for Frederick Douglass. All right. I love people that know their history, bro. I mean, it, it's it's very <laughs> rare the people that people dig in and know and know their history, and I I, I respect that. I truly respect that because plus he a lot had people a cool just look. True. He looked, he looked pretty fly, man. He looked. Fly. If you could, if you could, call, have one phone call, to call someone, living or dead. Who would it be? You could have an hour conversation with them. Hmm. An hour conversation with somebody living or dead. Um, hmm. God, so many things, so many names, so many things are floating through my head. Um, I would, I, I would, I guess I would have to say, um, this is going to sound s silly, but it's, uh, um, it's an author, is Herman Hesse, who is okay. who wrote my, one of my favorite books, um, just because I like the way he, he thinks and I like the way he writes. He wrote an incredible book called The Razor's Edge, which, um, um, which I love. So, a Summer secret. Set Mom. Somerset mom. Somerset mom. Okay. Yeah. A secret talent that that people wouldn't know about you that you do or have. Um. Secret talent. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm an animator. I animate, so um, that's pretty interesting to me. I also love to dance. I I was about to get into that next. I know you love yeah. to dance. So if you if 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 you could be if 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 someone was to or if you could be a mascot for a team in mm. NFL or what mascot would you be? Well, my, the two the two teams that I kind of root for. My wife's from Kansas City, so I I root for the Chiefs. And obviously, okay. with Mahomes there right now, they're kind of like. They should have won this last year, let's be honest. Um, I cannot fucking believe that Tom Brady won a <laughs> fucking <laughs> game. <dude. laughs> Man, it's like the universe conspired, like with Andy Reid's like, son getting into that fucking accident. Mm -hmm. and it's like the universe just conspired. They're like, no, nah, fucking Tom Brady's going to get this shit. What do we got to do? What do we got to do to fuck up the, the, the Chiefs this year? Let's just fuck up Andy Reid, man. He's yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, it was unbelievable. So it would be between the Chiefs and the Seahawks. Okay. If time freezes for everyone but you for one day, what does Shane Johnson do? I do some really perverted, evil, um, dark shit that would put me in jail, but no one would know. <laughs> If you could learn the answer to one question about your future, what would it be? 
what would the question be? Shit, man, that's tricky. Um, question about you know what? I I don't know that I want to know. I don't know that I want to know. Okay. Because I mean, the obvious question would be like, well, when am I going to die, or when am you know something like that? But I I just I don't I just think that, that would knowing that would just fucking would would fuck my head up. Top of your head, what song always puts you in a good mood? Um, I always put on this. This is a little more general, but I always put on um, Peter Gabriel or Chris Cornell. Um, those are my favorite artists, kind of go-to artists. Okay. Um, hold on. What's the most ridiculous thing since you became famous that you've bought? Most ridiculous thing? Yeah. Um, something you were just like, you, you, you bought it. Well, you didn't really need it, but you bought it anyway. And you're like, why did I waste my money on this shit? Um, I'm going to be, I'm going to be frank with you, man. I don't do that. I don't do Smart it. Smart man. Like, I, I'm like, I mean, I could say my house, but my house is awesome. And it's, and it's to take care of my family. And, um, I mean, I have a house and a car. I mean, but other than, other than that, do I splurge? I mean, not really. I, I, I have to buy suits and shit. You know how that is. You got to buy some mm -hmm. stuff. You got to have a variety of stuff for red carpets and stuff, but that's, but that's the name of the game. Um, I wish we didn't have to go out and buy thousand dollar suits to be honest. You know what I mean? <laughs> be but, but, um, but that's part of the name. Of the game. I, I don't really, I don't really splurge. I mean, I always have the near, the newest gear. I always have new technology like phones and shit, but, but most people do. So we'll do some rapid questions, uh, like one word answer I'll, I'll questions. Even, I'll just do one answer. I'm sorry. Yep. One, one word. One word. Yeah, one word, and then and then we'll take some fans in. So, okay. One Omari word. Hardwick. Hmm. I mean, the first thing that pops in my head is professional. Courtney Kemp. Godsend. Joseph Sakura. Uh, I mean, artist. Layla. Loren. Mm. Deep. 50 Cent. Entrepreneur. Um. Who can I think? What was the character? You guys got to help me out. The character that played uh, um, Greg Knox. Uh, Andy Bean. Andy Bean, that was it. Andy Bean's a dear friend of mine. Um, he just had a baby not too long ago, too. Um, Andy, uh, I would say friend. Hold on, let me answer something. So somebody says, yep. what's the name of this? Uh, so I, I was, my two favorite books, I, I was kind of confusing there. Herman Hesse, which is, he wrote a book called um, The Glass Bead Game. Okay. And a bunch of others. Um, Somerset Mom wrote The um, Razor's Edge, which is okay. my favorite book. So somebody, somebody was just asking. So yeah, Andy Bean is like, Andy B's incredible. Okay, next. Jerry, Jerry Ferreira. Uh, the actor or the character? Both. <laughs> <laughs> um, survivor. I mean, not the character so much, but, but Jerry. Okay. Um, Michael Rainey Jr. Gucci. Gucci? Gucci, yeah. Natari Naughton. Um, well, Natari is... is um, it's funny because I'm having a hard time differentiating between the character and the, and the, and the actress. 
But okay. um, with Naturi, I would say Hmm. God, that's a tough one, man. Um, it's because you're talking one word. I'm trying to. I'm trying to give you one word that sort of sums mm-hmm. up Naturi. Um, I, 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 uh, I mean, man, I, I can't give you one word. I would say she's fucking gorgeous. She's she's fun. She's. Um, She's a queen. Monique Gabriella. Oh. Spicy. <laughs> um, Enrique. Mm, playful. And last one I'm going to pick here. Uh, actually, I'll pick two more. Lorenz Tate. Slick. Rotimi. Ambitious. Sun Kang. Heart. David Sun Romero. Kang's my best friend, so. Is he? David Romero. Yeah. Jacked. <laughs> <laughs> that, dude, that dude is ripped. Okay, so now we're going to take fans. If you guys want to hop in here, I'm going to take a couple fans in the live. You guys can just send a request, and I will connect you in here. So hold on a second. Let me make sure. Guys, if you want to hop in and ask Shane a question, I'm going to allow you guys to hop in, just send a request into the live, and I will set you guys in here. Next person that wants to jump in. So you can send a request through here, guys, and we will lock you in. Hold on. Somebody's thinking about it right now. They're like, oh, should I? Shouldn't I? And I'm like, yeah, you should. Guys, your chance to jump in here right now and ask Shane a question directly. So shoot your shot. Hit the button. Hit the button. You want to come in here live? Hit the button. You got to hit the, uh, the the request button in the live. Somebody said that they requested. I don't see you here. Hold on. Lola the Catalina, what's your hit the request button? Let's go. Okay, here what we go. Got? Hold on. Yo. Yo, what up, what up? Man, Welcome you... to the room, man. Hold up, y'all gotta be for real. Hold up. What's, hold up. Your, what's your question, man? What's your question? Uh, how do it feel to be like the portrayed as the bad guy on Power? Well, you know, once you sort of accept that you're the bad guy, it's just it's just about being the best bad guy that you can. Um, at first, like I talked about earlier, it kind of stung a little bit to kind of be, you know, that kind of hate that's thrown at you. But after you kind of accept that it becomes fuel. So the more kind of hate I get, the more co- negative comments I get for me, it's just, it's just, it's just energy. And it just means that I'm doing my job. I'm not going to lie to you uh, around like after season four, I started loving you. Like after season four, it got to the point where it's like, he playing the bad guy role. So good. You got, you got no choice to love Cooper Sacks. It's like, you just play the role. Right. I give you, I give oh, you a prop. You, man. Thank yeah. You. What's, but your, what's your name? Muhammad. 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 Yeah. What's up? I just caught on to power now, like recently. I just finished all of it. Because I didn't really, I wasn't into power in the beginning. And then recently when I heard uh, book two came out, so I had went back all the way to the original, came all the way to now. I love it. What are you enjoying more? See, the first episode of power or power book two? Uh, I, th- I go with power. You always got to love the original, you know, with Omari and everybody before, you know, we lost. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Hold on. We'll take another question here, guys. So just hang up, and then we'll let know somebody else in the room. Okay. Have a good All one, right, bro. So Lola, Lola no. says they're in, but they, they said they hit, so we'll see. 
Yeah, hold on. Guys, send a request again. If you want to uh, jump in on this live, I will connect you into the room. Watch my mom will come in or something like that. <laughs> sure. What, what are you doing? Why aren't you? You need to start using lotion on your face and you need to take care of yourself. I'm starting to see wrinkles. I'm like, mom, fucking get off of here. What, it, what, as I'm waiting for somebody to hop in, what for you, what, what, what is the future goal for you now? Like, what is something that's on your bucket list career wise that you haven't done yet? Well, like I was kind of saying earlier, my, the real sort of thing I want to do now is I want to, I want to pull together like-minded people that are about the work and about the craft of it and, and just really, really create beautiful products and not, not have to answer to suits, you know, mm -hmm. not have to answer to somebody sit, sitting behind a desk telling us that, that it doesn't make sense for their algorithm or that we don't have a celebrity with a certain number of followers or some bullshit like that. I just want to be, I just want to make good work that we can sit down and, and watch and have people, mm -hmm. holy shit, this fucking thing works and connects and, and it's palpable and it's visceral and we all can have, and, and it's doing something, you know what I mean? And it's not about, and I feel like if you do that kind of work that the business, the business comes, I feel like the business comes, you know? So, and I think that's the future. I think that we're going to, you know, you watch 10 years from now, it's not going to be so much about studios. It's going to be more about content creators. Mm -hmm. Guys, if you have a question for Shane, you want to hop in this live, I'm going to accept a few more calls. So send the request. Just hit that button and I'll let you into the live. I requested. So we have a couple people saying they requested. Got no request here. Hold on. Send the request again, bro. Send it again. Guys, if you have a question for Shane, I'm going to let you guys into the live to jump on this call. This is your chance. Shoot your shot right now. Send a request and we'll let you in. So how does it work? So somebody hits request and then it just pops yeah. up on your end? Yeah, it'll, the thing will pop up on my end and I'll be able to see it. So guys, if you have a request, send it right now and I'll lock you, I'll, I'll jump you guys into the live. Oh, King, King Wesley saying, I know Nia. Nia's the best, man. Are you kidding? King Wesley, where are you at, man? You gotta, you gotta come out to LA. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You got to come out to L.A. and do your thing. Join up with the, with the crew. Get together with the uh, community. Big things in the works. Nia's killing it, man. I know a lot of fans have been asking for it, but what do you feel about Cooper Sacks getting his own spinoff? <laughs> I mean, listen, I, to be honest, it's the sort of thing that um, would be incredible, but, but also, uh, realistically speaking, I don't, I don't see that happening because it's, you know, the Cooper Sacks is the sort of, he's the bad guy of the show, right? Like our, the show is about, about the, uh, it's funny, but the show is kind of about the dark heroes and the dark heroes are Omari. The dark heroes are Tommy. And, and now it's Michael Rainey Jr. Playing, you know, Tariq and, and it's not, it's not about Cooper Sacks, but see, if somehow it manifested and there was some crazy show that was, you know, it would have to be dark. Like Cooper Sacks would have to take a turn. That's what Jaylene, you can just send the request by pressing the button. Just press the button and I'll, I'll lock you in to the room. It's at the very, very top. You just got to send a request. <laughs> Sacks will eventually get a win on power. You know, don't hold your breath, man. <laughs> don't hold your breath. Um, I, uh, I, I agree, though. At some point, Sue Cooper Sacks has had a lot of L's, a lot of L's, and he's he's had a lot of games. I've showed up to court many times. I've had many attempts at at and, and I've pretty much 
across the board lost. Guys, your chance to shoot your shot here, guys. If you want to hop into the live, send a message request, and I'll lock. I'll bring you guys into this live. Taking a fan question right now. Hold on. I don't see we your, like, your request. We have like three or four people saying that they. Yeah, I'm. Questions. I'm looking for it right now, but there's nothing happening on here. Maybe they're mm-hmm. requesting me. You need to request. Yeah, you guys need to request topic. Hot Topic Celeb TV, guys. If you want us to I jump can't. into the room, request Hot Topic Celeb TV. Little Victor, you got to request. You got to be following Hot Topic Celeb TV or at D Lawn on here, and we will. Let, I will let you in. All right, so so we can also just if for some reason we can't get them on live, they can just type in a question here. Okay. Right, Vetrax. Yeah. And we've got little Victor. Hit us with a question, even if you can't get in for some reason. Iron Fit, thank you. I think I follow Iron Fit too. Actually, we're trying to get jacked over here. You see this? Look at that! Come on now. What do you do? What do you do, bro, to stay in shape? What do you do to stay in such rip shape all the time? Yeah, I just, a lot of it's the biggest, the hardest component is the nutrition, obviously, but especially at our age, you know, right? You get older. And Jesus, bro. Holy <laughs> Hercules. You can't, eat, you can't eat the bullshit. But um, do, you have a strict, do you have a strict diet? Yeah, I have a pretty strict diet. And I mean, it's not like, it's not like I'm, it's a healthy diet. You know, it's just a healthy diet. And I, and I work out pretty much six days a week for about an hour and um and you know i just push myself hard until i hate going to the gym so i don't go to the gym everything i do is at home guys if you want to hop into this live just request hot topic celeb tv the button at the top and i'll i'll log you guys in because i haven't got any one of you guys let's train that's what's next we're going to be doing a training session here um yeah, we have like three, four, five different people here saying, like, let me join. We were doing this. Tommy faked his death. Wait a second. What are you talking about? Who said that? Tommy faked his death. Maybe that's why the spinoffs. What if his spinoff is just about him being a ghost? It's like all afterlife. Hold on. Guys, I'm still Sachs waiting for your request. Is- you can. Sax is gay. Hmm. I guess you didn't see the finale of season one. I just shredded 80 pounds. Dude. King Wesley, that's awesome, man. Good for you. What would you say for you from young Shane Johnson to now? Your biggest regret? Um, Biggest regret? I don't, you know what? I don't really know that I've, that I've had a bunch of regrets. I've, I have. T Trees 32, you can send a request. Just hit Hot Topic Celeb TV, the invite button. Go ahead, Ben. I would just, um, I would, I would say, how, where does the invite button show up? Maybe people are confused. It's, I believe it's at the, uh, hold on. How do you, how do you do it? I mean, obviously I'm already on here, so. It's, it's at the bottom. Up. It's, it's at the, it's at the bottom of the, uh, the live. They'll see it's like a little, like, uh, looks like a little, like a little camera. Do I want my kids to follow my footsteps? You know, I, I'm okay if they if they power fans forever ask that. Um, I would totally be okay with them doing it, and I have kind of given them, you know, entree sort of my and my wife as well. We're both actors, so we're like, hey, here you go, and they've just not been interested, and we're not gonna, we're certainly not gonna push it. I want them to be whatever their heart tells them that they are and whatever they want to pursue. I'm just here to support them and help them be their best. I don't have any designs on pushing my kids in any direction. 
with a plus sign. What does that mean? Eric? Yeah, it basically looks like it looks like a little it looks like a little like almost like a little microphone, guys. And it's got a little plus sign on it. You just press that button. How does it be part how does it feel to be part of the biggest show of our generation? Well, that's you know, I don't know if it is the biggest show of our generation, but if it is, um it's certainly up there, right? I mean, it's not far behind the uh, Game of Thrones and a couple other shows. Um it's pretty incredible and it's, and it's, and it's um, unexpected because I don't think any of us really knew that it was going to be this sort of monster that it's become. And I mean, not very many shows finish after six seasons and then spawn three or four spinoffs. So it's, it's pretty awesome. And it's an incredible feeling to be honest. What did I just 230 do to 215. That's not bad. That's, that's pretty damn good. I had to lose about 20 pounds myself recently. Why did ghosts get killed off? What really happens behind the scenes after, after season four writing became sloppy? What the fuck? Writing became sloppy? Who the fuck is this? 50 told me during my casting call audition in LA for BMF to tone up. 50 told you to tone up? <laughs> <laughs> Man, fuck that. You know, listen. Everybody has their own brand. We don't all have to be fucking jacked and we don't all have to be look a certain way, especially now. Like that's the one thing that's incredible about our industry now is that it's finally in the last handful of years, it's just cracked open and you can be who you are. You don't have to fit into some box. I am fit and I want to be, and I want to be fit because for me, my brand specifically, what I'm interested in in the future is I fucking love action movies. I love I want to I want to do some fucking action films, and so I I I want to kind of be in shape just just in case in case mm -hmm. that shit comes my way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just be ready, be ready. What's your favorite season you played in? It's always the current one, man. It's always the current one because that means I'm still here. <laughs> Guys, you guys want if you guys want to jump in, you have to hit that little button so I can send you and connect you into the into the live. The end was garbage. It should have been Tasha. No, what the what the fuck? Who's writing this shit? T Trice 32. Man. Man. But that's predictable, isn't it? If Tasha kills her if her wife kills her husband because he's you know, cheated on her. And it's just like too obvious. Like having the son kill you. Oh, I'm telling you, for somebody that has sons, you have kids? I mean, what me? Kids? I, I know you I have, have kids. Cats. You don't have kids? <laughs> no, man, just cats. Oh, Those are my kids. kids. So to have two sons, the concept, the idea of getting a, a, a son into a position where he turns on and kills his mentor slash supporter provider father is like oh my god there's nothing there's nothing that cuts deeper than that i i think that's everybody's saying they can't join man i'm i'm waiting here but, but no one sent any requests Tariq was too predictable all right we're about to fight i'm gonna fight with t trice 32 we're gonna get a fight he said he he or she said that they were really disappointed and they want to fight and it's it's going to happen. We're going to, like, fucking fisticuffs is going to happen. Ah, let me loosen up here. Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys want to hop in, don't forget, each and every Sunday night, it says, it's Sunday service. Tonight, joining us, Shane Johnson, live from the Power Series. Hot Topic, SelectTV.com. Somebody's saying to try and restart the live because it's a glitch. You want to try it or you want to, like, just bounce? You want to do that? What you want to do yeah, let's, we can, we can do it. that if you want. I'll, I'll, okay. Let's, let's X out. Hey, everybody, we're going to X out, okay. and we're going to jump right back in.